Hello and welcome to another episode of Silver and Steel. Uh, we are your Tuesday night crew um, back with uh, the, the, the ludicrousness that is this adventure. Uh, before we get into it, let's introduce uh, all the wonderful people on your screen as well as who they play. Take it away, Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the community manager for D&D Beyond. I'm playing Orkira Eldrex. She's a dragonborn cleric. I'm here to heal you. <laughs> Hope. Hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. I play Penelope Halfpint, your friendly halfling druid, Circle of the Moon. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Jen. Hey, I am Jen Kretschmer. I am playing Alindra, your uh, warlock cleric. Uh, no, I'm not. You know, who am I? What am I? Step off. <laughs> what day is it? Time has no meaning. Did you give Daisy what? her powers? It was Alindra the entire that was, It was time. me all along. Oh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> would be an epic reveal. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no, I'm take two. Hi. I'm Jen Kretschmer. I am playing Alindra, who is your diviner cleric. <laughs> you really want to see Tasha's Warlock? Are you really sure getting you're not to me? Warlock? I'm just like, ooh. There's still time. Diviner all, all, all cleric. The cool kids multi -clean. Like, keep doing it. Keep stacking them on. <laughs> keep stacking them on. It's fine. Divination. Multi classes. Agma. Life. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm doing that and being confused today. Hi. I'm right there with you, Todd. I'm Todd Kenrick. I say words about things. Uh, you can find me just about anywhere. Uh, I'm the creative manager of D&D Beyond. And I, like, I like to throw a little bit of shade. It's going to be this kind of show today, everybody. Oh, uh, okay. okay. All right. We're doing it like that. Okay, great. Sure, sure. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what B. Dave is going to say. Now I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, B. Dave? You know, I have a lot of thoughts. I was going to say the reason why I was giving the camera the stink eye when we came up is because Todd did me a confuse. Like, we had our 10-second countdown, and Todd's like, we all got to do this new thing. And one person was like, yay. And he was like, but not you. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> why? I was like, huh? Like, I was trying to hide my upset. Yeah, like like new oh. rule, and he's like, "Boo, not no. you though." <laughs> I meant that for Jasmine because she's the dungeon master. <laughs> and then and then egregiously swacked me, stole my bit, stole my thing. So that's cool, you know. Uh, so <laughs> hi, uh, I'm B. Dave Walters. Um, I have a shaved head and a goatee because I'm cool. And Megan Kenrick is the best person in the whole world. Ooh, no nice. pressure. <laughs> Managed to shade and make it. Do you like that? Is he one two? It's a boom boom. It's balance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take it away, Megan. Hey everyone, I'm Megan Kenrick, and I'll be playing Sophias, the okayest artificer this side of the ports of Argent. Uh, and today I have with me the cauldron of everything. It has everything you'd ever want. Avon Shade, random dismembered body parts, uh, your missing socks, your nose, a few toggle switches. I don't know what those are doing in there. 20-sided uh, die with 20s on all sides, elephant kigurumis, diamonds, uh, lifetime of supply of butter. <laughs> And incense. That's cute. <laughs> I appreciate past a certain point, there's a hard number of what constitutes a lifetime supply of butter because once you've consumed it, you're out of life. So <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a number. There's a I don't, on that. Yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. what it is, but the number exists. That's, yeah. that's the trick. That's the catch, right? <laughs> I have a lifetime supply of stabs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Again, there's a cap on that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> At least there should be. There is a hard limit, yep. And I'm that bronze girl, um, and J Jasmine, the people, some, <laughs> can I get a take two as well? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, should we just end this and start over again? Uh, like, what, yeah. what, what, what are we all takes are in the cauldron? I have really just gotta pull one out spicy and spicy ramen, again. like. Do you want me to do it for you? I'm really good at that. Before the camera, and but so. You're glistening like, though, you look so good. You look very you, moisturized. <laughs> Oh man, that's like one time, like just a couple days ago, I went into like a coffee place to grab a coffee and uh, she was like, oh my gosh, your skin looks so great. What highlighter do you use? And I was like, sebum. And, and she was just like, sebum. <laughs> like she was like writing it down. I was like, the, okay, never mind. She's like, that's my face. Because people ask me about streaming, they're like, do you wearing highlighter? I'm like, that's my face grease, fam. That is <laughs> the plight 
of my it's the dewy look the, 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 glowing and you heaven. have it naturally so you know, in oily yes. in oily tea zone i know that feel yes. yeah no it's just grease <laughs> Anyways, hi, um, I'm that bronze girl. You may know me as Jasmine Bueller. I'm the DM for this campaign. Um, oh, and I'm pretty close to 23,000 followers on Twitter. So what? if you want to drop me a follow, uh, that would be great. I almost never like plug it, but holy crap, that would be like a huge milestone for me. So uh, think about it, consider it. Sometimes there's funny stuff on there. Uh, but before we get into more funny stuff with this campaign, two announcements. Number one, every single time myself or someone on the cast rolls in that 20, Somebody in the audience has a chance of winning a legendary bundle courtesy of D&D Beyond. It's very cool. You want one. Trust me. It'll help you run all of your campaigns super easy. And secondly, we have some great fan art to show you today. Right, Lauren? I'm going to let you handle this part because uh, you confused me successfully earlier when we discussed what that fan art was. Yes, because uh, <laughs> the first thing that we have is kind of unique. So I, I got sent this. It's on Twitter. If you go and look at oh, um, Glitterbeard on Twitter, this is literally the Max Dunbar art of Orkira. And uh, there's a whole thread of explaining what it is, but it is essentially a piece of plastic that they have then carved the, uh, the art into of Orkira and then lit it. So it looks like she's on fire. Uh, so it is plastic, which is what happened before the show is we have a piece of art that's plastic, but it is super cool. That's uh, cool. Or hot, I, I guess I should say. So yeah, definitely go check them out on Twitter. You can see the whole process that's and amazing. a whole bunch of, of really just like fascinating um, pictures of the whole evolution of this, of, of scratching it all in. And it's, it's really neat. That's and then the other thing that we have uh -oh. uh, our friends uh -oh. <laughs> ttrpg gifts have returned this time uh memeing us up with a, does this cat the one that just nods to music have yeah a, cat jam it, it is cat jam okay yeah I'm, you can use it in chat too if you have uh the gif emotes enabled it's like one of those emotes you could use all over twitch cat jam ah. I am I'm cool enough to know it's a meme and not cool enough to know what the name of the meme is. I'm halfway there. Ooh. But yes, they they took our theme music, uh, wonderfully sung by Hope Lavelle. Mm -hmm. And now you have a cat grooving out to the music. And it's That's great. Awesome. So yes, thank you to both of you. Definitely check both of them out and thank them for making amazing, fun, silver and steel things for us to enjoy. Yay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, with that, I have one final thing to say, uh, hit the trailer. Got him. I got him. Finally. <laughs> Finally. I was waiting for it. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. I am into it. Nice baritone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So it's for the last remix. time on the show, <laughs> what exactly happened in your opinion? Well, Machete is fine. Machete, hmm. machete is super fine. Interesting. Uh, uh, Super fine, absolutely, hundred percent, really fine. In going on an adventure. No, that, no, no curses was we, detected. We woke up and tried to go next door, <laughs> and it it took us the the whole show to walk there. Theory, act really, it took us three episodes to make it two doors down. If we're if we're being honest with ourselves here, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and why do you feel that happened? Uh, In your own words. The liberal media. No. Um, <laughs> because we uh, cannot stay on task to save Because we our, love each other. Uh, oh, I'm going to go with that. I'm going right. to go with that. I'm sure lives. So actual important points that we, 
it it became it became obvious early that when Daisy had given me her doll, she had encoded some memories in it and freely wasn't aware of that at the time. Uh, machete in her old evil persona uh, performed some fiendish ritual magic that helped me access the memories that uh, Daisy had left for me. So I saw the woman who um, gave Daisy her powers, who's apparently a celestial of some type that had kind of this mixture of like sea imagery and woods imagery. So she's some kind of sea druid or something. I don't know. That's TBD. Uh, after that, realized that she was performing fiendish pack magic. So Freely kind of tapped his friend Orkira, realized she was right to remove the curse on Machete, which now we don't know what state she's in. Is she still going to be Machete? Is her name going to be Butterknife? Is she going to be like super soft core? I don't know. Uh, did finally make it over to talk to Millie, talking about uh, the what do all of these like random calamitous events have in common? And we found out that she's got a new plot of land that every time she was going to go out and start planting and farming and digging up that land, something would happen that pulled her and all the other dwarves away. So our good Drood, Penelope Halfpint was going to go out and shape earth to uh, aerate the soil a little bit and see whatever completely fine and uneventful thing is out there. And then tonight at midnight, we're supposed to go out into the ocean to talk to Hank's grandma, who's hopefully going to give us some insight before we go fight like Kretzala, who's like lightning Godzilla, and it's going to be fine. That, is, that, was <clears throat> um, that was amazing. Yeah. Is, isn't Godzilla also, though, already lightning Godzilla? <laughs> Now I'll clap with my hands. <laughs> All right, sorry, it's just a joke. Um, <laughs> also, yes, pajamas and breakfast yes. and cocoa. And, and, and we were oh, and magic candy. Mm. Magic, magic candy, candy um, made me very burpy, and I burped fire. I burped fire at children, not directly oh, at them, just above their heads, just to scare them a little bit because they were they were talking. Is some, there some ish? Is there like smoke or steam in front of you? Like, are you okay, Megan? What is that? <laughs> It's the yeah. cauldron. Oh, the cauldron yeah. is really <laughs> doing a thing. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> I was so like, cool. maybe you guys should get out of the house. You know? <laughs> <laughs> something could be very wrong. Uh, Sophia, I think something's on fire over there. Know, like, wanna, ah, yeah. wanna... Oh, no, sorry. I was just a little bit gassy. I had um, I had some candy that made me burp fire for a little bit. Um, oh, I, I need to, well, uh, what, uh, what is the uh, D&D equivalent of Pepto-Bismol? <laughs> Press digitation. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I have some of that. Yeah, but your skin looks beautiful after that oh, spicy. Thank you. Yeah, that the Glass spicy next. meatball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Billy had a really nice spread, and it just happened to include some of the spiciest peppers on. I, the I put myself in my laboratory, and I just burped, and boom, you have a spa. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, and that was where we left off at Millie's house, saying we'd go out back and see what was what because we have to ship out in mid midnight tonight, and I think we established it was like mid afternoon by this point. I believe. It was no. Morning. No, it was we breakfast. Just had breakfast. Oh, yeah. No, breakfast, we just had yeah. breakfast. Also, yeah. it seemed like she might have been making breakfast earlier for someone else besides us. There was that Maybe. kind of possibility. Uh, she was kind of nervous about some stuff because we're really weird. Um, really weird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Me and Sophia didn't want to say anything, but. Um, the, the, Alindra, the you're really who, weird. <laughs> who uh, dealt with Daisy gave her some glowing scales. Oh, and Which... there was some confusion as to whether that was a fish scale or they were, were fish yeah. scales or, or balance yeah. scales. Yeah. Uh, balance they were balance scales. Really, I feel the only person that was confused was me, literally, because when you were, oh no, was it when you were with me on that one? The... No, oh, I was 100% with you. I was just like, you know, but I, I just didn't want to say anything because, you know, I'm coming from a place in where I'm always thinking about scales as like, you know, scales like fish or dragon you know reasons, when she kept so. describing her as like sea foam and stuff and i legit was like if we could get those scales i'll show them to our care like literally in my head that's what i was thinking and then you guys were like no scales i was like oh 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 i will say this also uh the mm -hmm. the woman who i'm pulling up my notes here but i don't think ever even gave daisy a name nope um Nope. was very much preoccupied with justice, right and wrong, and making sure that uh, Daisy like paid a lot of attention to what was right and what was wrong in situations. Not necessarily good and evil, but justice, which uh, could be a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Daisy, too, is, uh, gave her full name. So that's the thing. Yes. Daisy gave her name, did not get a name in return. And but also, we... yes. And also, we just don't know at this point whether all of these things are related whether some of them are related whether some of them are just coincidental mm -hmm. we're still figuring all of that out there's a lot going on 
or whether I've plopped you into a semi-functional piece of world that I meticulously built over a period of weeks, you'll never really know. <laughs> We'll never know. We'll just have to no so. The elaborate planning <laughs> could be spontaneous accidents and laying track on the fly. Uh, um, con considering all the things we talked about in session zero and the number of those things that have not happened as we're here at like session 90, um, we're doing both. We're threading the needle. We're threading the needle. 31. <laughs> well, I always feel like when y'all think something is cool, I'm here to see you go for it. You know? Yeah, man. This is why Even we like you as a DM. Two episodes of a uh, bake sale. <laughs> I was going to get that community service. The great Argent Baker. I was going to do it, Todd. I you didn't weren't going to You weren't going <laughs> to get, I, get I, out of that. I machete wouldn't be here today. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you didn't do anything wrong. Oh, yeah. Wrong. You just rolled poorly. Daisy Daisy wouldn't be here today. <laughs> Wait, somebody wouldn't be here. Might have been Alindra. I don't know. I don't remember yeah, what I was in just, trouble for. You just didn't what? roll very just well me. in that council. <laughs> I'm just saying you might not have been here. You don't even know my birthday. You don't know how old mm. I am. It was sometime between mid-winter harvest and liars week. There is no harvest in winter. There is no harvest <laughs> in winter. <laughs> you hear and, you hear Millie say. And oh, he's we, he's good at a lot of things. Farming is not one of them, Millie. Yeah, sorry, Millie. Uh, well, hey, the, uh, actually, I grew up being a farmer. But that's rude. Uh, also, that's accurate. Not, none, of the, none of those holidays exist here. Yeah, we don't really have a calendar for this plane of existence. So uh, I don't. A I calendar? Don't want my... Do you want mine? I mean, no, do... I'll, I'll get one of my own. But thank you. I, do I not, appreciate the offer. Do not let him start Liar's Night here. Don't. Just don't. Mm -mm. Liar's Night. Yeah, uh, no. Hey, is this the field? This field out here? This the one we need to go? It's the one right next to it. Property I've just acquired not too mm. long you ago. You don't have a spare calendar, do you? Mm, I probably do somewhere. History books? Sometimes the fertilizer company gives me a spare one with their branding oh. on it. Oh. I, I would love one. I don't know who would want a calendar of shit Dates and manure, and but <laughs> holidays. And that's what they've decided to decorate it with. Moon Are phases? all the holidays on that calendar I related to manure? I love manure Farming. and dirt. <laughs> I would love that calendar. She goes and gets it for you. And when you look at it, you do notice it is full of like dung and dirt and different types of soil. Wow. I love it. <laughs> Good to know. I mean, you never know when you'll need that knowledge. Might be part of the con conversational uh, mm -hmm. jargon mm -hmm. of the local area. At least it's not a scratch and sniff calendar. <laughs> we can very, make it one. We make those. Uh, I mean, uh, when, how right do when you want to make one? Wait, when, when I'm she says we can, curious. when we can make it one, I press to digitate the smell of manure over the oh. over oh. the <laughs> calendar. Boom. Wow, Penelope, that was really quick. Yeah. Yeah, is, Penelope. So is this what is, they call is that like owlbear? Gag gift? <laughs> it, it is now. It's make, make you gag. gag. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gagging. Yes, it is yeah. a successful gag gift. Mm. <laughs> All right, so field? I hold my arm out for Penelope to like, you know, the arm and arm to walk out. And she takes it and she skips. Yep, I'm like, you're going to get to do some dirt stuff. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there that's Penelope goes. She's frolicking again. What a happy, <laughs> what a happy little little We're person. We're gonna see some dirt. We're gonna see some dirt. Never it's kind of why she always so fails every time dirt. she tries to be sneaky. That's, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we do so much dirt. We just don't play in a lot of dirt. That is all true. That is all true. Hmm. <laughs> all right. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Watch that work. I'm a bit, uh, bit uh, curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, Millie. Sure. I mean, if something terrible happens, you know, stay behind us. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. We were concerned that people were coming after her, weren't we? Okay. Her slash yeah. a, or a reason they don't want this land disturbed. What if there's money in yeah. it? It's yours. Is it? Really? Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's your land. Yeah, it's your land. That's You know that's how that works, right? Let's dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you might say. How big is this plot of land? It's pretty big. Um, it's about, let's see. It's about 
Should I do meters or feet? Let's do meters. This is America. <laughs> I'm like, no, if, I appreciate I'm like, the you meters. Want, no, no, no. Want, the Canadian in me what, is so happy right now. If you now. want me to know what you're talking about, do feet. Yeah, I can kind of do meters. <laughs> the product me of and two different acres. school systems, you know? <laughs> That's my product of two different school systems coming out. Um, so it is roughly... Now I'm like doing a conversion in my head. Um, it would be about 300 feet by 300 feet. So about a football field. Well, a football field's not that wide, though. So it's 300 feet long, but not quite that wide. So like a like a chunky football field. About two yeah. acres. Yeah. Wait, am mm -hmm. I thinking right? I mean, 100 oh, yards half is that. 300. Well, yeah. Half 100 that. yards is a, okay, sorry. <laughs> half a football field. Got it. Okay. Yeah. One acre. Yes. <laughs> yes. I should have said one acre because in my head, I was like, that's like what? 300 feet? <laughs> so it's more like 150 feet by 150 feet. Okay. We're not talking multiple. Yeah, someone acres. in chat said 100 okay. meter by 100 meter. I was like, yes, that's what I'm like. I'm like, that's like what a one to three <laughs> ratio. <laughs> if you should have just gone forget. with your gut and given us the, <laughs> the if you, if if you said, a, if, you said a, if you said 100 meters, I still would have been like about a football field. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. One <laughs> battle map. <laughs> For how convenient. One battle map. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? it but are we on on a grid side or the hex side? Oh shit! Ooh. Yeah, large scale. This well, just got we super have two serious. warlocks in the party, so I go hex. Mm -hmm. hmm. Range. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm I... <laughs> so walk onto the land and just look at Penelope like, Aww. okay, do <laughs> druid, druid. What? Yeah, just, just druid. Hey, um, what are we looking for again? Things in the dirt. Something, something here they don't want dug up. Bodies, okay, okay. ancient gods, gold, okay, so curses. You thought you were and plowing it? It actually wasn't a particular, I think it was not supposed oh. to be a particularly large plot here that we figured out that Penelope could clear in a day. Just oh, using I, the most. Oh, we could do it or really half, quickly. Half, yes, do it quick, definitely quick. Okay, like quick. Um, am I supposed to like, uh, you know, not okay. You know what? I'm just gonna do it. Uh, Avrin. Yeah. Penelope starts like climbing up onto your shoulders. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. Okay. Are <laughs> I you am ready? usually tall for a player I am. Here we go. Hit. Yeah. And she jumps into the air. And as she lands on the ground, she goes mm -hmm. boom. And she casts Erupting Earth. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Whoa. And uh, can you read uh, what this does? Um, I choose a point on the ground I see within range, mm -hmm. and I, a fountain of churned earth and stone erupts in a 20-foot cube centered on that point. Okay, perfect. So like a, so a circle, <laughs> so 60 feet. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Math. And you aim it, you said, towards the center? Yes. Okay, perfect. So almost like a crop circle, you all see Penelope land and like this weird concentric circle kind of erupts from her. And you hear Millie mutter like, I guess I'll have to plant my crops in a circle this time instead of lines. <laughs> you hear her say behind you like, she's like in her head, she's planning it like, I suppose I could grow radishes in a circle. And she's like trying in her head to think like, how <laughs> she's gonna have this like really ornate circular field. Um, all right, so. You're clearing. Alindra's comparing this dirt to the calendar, trying to figure out the information <laughs> about what type it is. Yeah. Oh, it seems to be what month is quite this a, dirt? Quite a loose soil. What month is this dirt? Because <laughs> we're growing these sorts of vegetables. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was a good month. Um, um, can I think while, while she's doing all of this, I start my ritual to take magic. Okay, perfect. So you start casting your, your ritual for detect magic. Um, Penelope, you are clearing a 60 foot square of what is, uh, what did we land on what the footage would be? A thousand feet? Well, it'd be a thousand meters, quite a bit more feet. Um, we said it was 100 by 100 meters. So it's, 900, it's an acre. Nine, 900 square feet. 900 square feet. Okay. So go ahead and roll for 
I'll usually do a luck roll, but yeah, I guess like, yeah, go ahead and make a, make a, just a, a naked D20 roll. And then you're okay. aiming. <laughs> this show is currently safe for children. True. I'm like, maybe it isn't. So I'm, like, I'm like, close your tabs, y'all. <laughs> um, and you're aiming for an 18 or up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It'll get easier if you continue with the strat. Okay, wait, so just Rating rolling a C for critical. Just rolling a 20. Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. You know what? This is a luck roll. Yeah. It's a one, but I'm a halfling, so I'm lucky. Hey. I get to go again. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Very nice. I love it. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's a 14. Hmm. So you look through like the sort of furrows you've uh, very thoughtfully created, you know, um, in a circle around uh, the point you've landed and you don't find anything. Millie, have you had a chance to look at the whole acreage yet? Like explore it or map it or, you know, kind of walk through it, see if there was any distinguishing features, anything that stood out, any reason we might want to look at a particular area? I've only marked it to put in the fence. And you notice now she has like sticks in the ground and like a, a rope kind of tied around them, like around the, around the plot of land. She's like, I haven't had time. Okay, that's fair. Got a decently good deal on it. Yeah, who was the previous owners? It's all used to be a vineyard. And actually, as she mentions that, Alindra, you notice in the book, that like uh, the type of soil this is, is one that is very high in nitrous quality. And it's usually something that's like laying fallow for a long time or like uh, where the, the plants have been plowed into the soil um, and then just left to, to sit there for a long time. The soil has been resting. It's very rich. Was there a reason that they sold it? They were missing. So the land went to uh, the city and I bought it directly from them. Uh, excuse me? Hmm. They Are went people? missing? Yeah. Uh, for years, I suppose. Oh, maybe they're still this in This place here. has been abandoned for, uh, probably about 20 years. Uh, I start looking around now. Do any of the plants look like wilted or like, I don't know, unhallowed? <laughs> Mm -hmm. When she says that, I like very slowly start rotating. Like, does it look <laughs> like a Tim Burton movie out here? Yeah. So as you kind of like look around, you notice that there are, the part of the farm that Millie has tamed is very lush. Things are going there very well. Her business, although she's newer to agriculture, is, is, is booming. Um, you can see she has like a storehouse on the property. Her cattle seem to be doing okay. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you do notice though, the, the plots of land like adjacent to hers are completely undeveloped. Um, and some of them actually have like, uh, like, I guess like wreckages or, or, um, not wreckages so much as like farm buildings that have fallen into disrepair. So there's like a, a silo in the distance that's like no longer operational. The roof has caved in. This, it's like lilted on one side, it's kind of collapsed in on itself. Little things like that. Um, and there's, uh, there's also uh, like a old shack that's kind of like fallen over on itself that you think at one point may have housed like pigs or something of that nature, like animals, you know? Um, whenever my detect magic is done, uh, mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, hey, friend, would you join me? I'm going to go over there and do my sense thing. But why do you want me to join you while you're doing that? Well, because if something terrible happens, I don't want it to happen to just me. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> anyone, any, anyone else want something terrible to happen to them? I mean, Ooh, me, 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 me. Oh, uh, no, as but, Sophia but no, hears this, and she stuff. whistles and summons her <laughs> Eldritch Cannon. Uh, she calls it Butters Number Three. That's the Protector yeah. Cannon. And this little cannon crawls out of her bag of holding up her shoulder. Uh, everybody mm -hmm. gets a plus eight uh, within a 10 foot radius. So they're uh, temporary hit points. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, uh, also, I, my I, math was super bad, and I'm sorry. Oh, oh don't worry. It's a I whole mean, lot bigger than I said, because I'm 
<laughs> not. Totally. I'm terrible at math, so I believed okay. you. Yeah. Also, I said I was a warlock today, so who knows what's going on? I don't usually use feet for spaces that are that large. So, like yeah. I said, I'm a product of two school systems. So, I when you're <laughs> multiplying 300 by 300 and still did it wrong. So, yeah. Oh wait, so hang on. I Why shouldn't I was an English major. You're fine. Don't worry about it. If out of this D and D game, the only thing you take away is like they don't know how to convert meters. I'm going to be beating myself up about that for like the next. Wait, no. I'm going to see. I, 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 I think Smile. I did it right. It's I think I did it right in my deep. head, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use my calculator before I say out loud that if I did it wrong because this is not my. Uh, ma I, I I cannot do a math, but I know a lot of tricks. So let's see. Let's see if I was right, and if I'm right, I'm going to tell you how it is I did it. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes, but sorry. While please, he's double checking yes. that, I have I have, I have two in-game <laughs> questions. Yes. It's, it's oh. ninety thousand. Yay! I oh. was right. Okay. It's over 9,000. Yeah, what? We're actually looking at closer to uh <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a big space. Times 1076. You just multiply yeah. the first number and then you just add the number 1,157,776. Really, yeah. you seem to be thinking really hard. Do, don't you do show, should we get into trouble? <laughs> it's it's well, a relative. I mean, I've been detecting magic and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to I'm going to go in and, and then I bop out about 60 feet into the like um uh, into the undeveloped area, and then I hit mm -hmm. my divine sense when I'm so okay. it's like all, all around me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna expeditious retreat after freely. Okay, so he <laughs> can still benefit off the eldritch uh cannon. Yeah, oh, thank you. Or Kara, what were you, you said you had two questions? Uh, so, real quick, the temporary hit points like, did they just happen, or do we have to stay within 10 feet of Sophia? I think you have to stay within 10 feet. Okay, good to know. Uh, the other thing that our hero is going to do is, as they all mm -hmm. run off in different directions, she'll come stand next to Alindra and Penelope and go, this is a really big plot of land. Do we want to scout the whole yes. thing? Okay. Anyone want to come? And she'll hold out her arms. Oh, Alindra, go. All right. She'll scoop you up and we'll, we'll go like 20. Mm -hmm. 25 feet up mm -hmm. not too high and uh start with a perimeter and i'll do like a, a spiral yeah. in towards the middle looking for anything that might be worth checking yeah. out i don't know um as you take off uh millie says to you penelope she says uh it's not that large not for farming anyway like she's like perplexed it <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Everyone thinks it's so big. She's like sitting there, like looking at her plow. And you see now her, her plow is laying like kind of outside, you know, her house, like leaned up against it. And she's like looking at the plow and looking at the field. She's like, it's not that large. A day's work, maybe half a day's work at most. Unless. And Penelope is going to wild shape into a giant badger <gasps> and start digging. <laughs> just start Ooh, plowing. Yeah. This like bowls Millie over, and she's like, <laughs> "Aren't you concerned, Avrin? Your lass has turned into a badger." What? No, she hasn't. That's Sophia's. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, your wait. friend. Oh, that happens all the time. Look, I become undead. Oh. <laughs> I, just, I just turn into like this vampiric zombie, like bat thing. See, mm -hmm. no, it's all the day. Hey, 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 freely. That stump, that stump looks, e that stump looks evil. Shoot that I do, stump. I do know when I divine sense uh -huh. for undead celestials, fey fiends, or anything under mm -hmm. the effects of the unhallow spell. If he pangs on my divine sense, <laughs> especially now that he's in this form, I'm like, ha. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry, still on hot food mode, spicy food mode. Um, so actually, freely, so you activate your divine sense. And uh, as you do, um, you do get like a, you, you do get some sense of like, there's something in the vicinity near you that does kind of ping off your radar. Really, what does your ping your sense? And I'm like, I just, I feel like you should be coming up and you're not. And I just, this, this is this like an, you know, something's over there. And then, and then I do kind of go mm -hmm. in that direction. So yes. if, if, if going that way. There's danger that way. If Akira's still flying, I just like look up and I just shoot a couple of Eldritch Blast straight up. I'm, ah! like, I, I, I'm like, I don't think those come back down. <laughs> well, we're going to find out. And then <laughs> some poor right. child. 
or <laughs> demon. Yeah, I watched a documentary about a crime scene investigators in a place called Miami that uh, they, they that same thing happened, but no. Um, and then I just kind of keep walking. Oh, Miami. It sounds like a very exotic, exotic place. Yeah, nice beaches, but they're all so dramatic there. Yeah. Oh. It's very, it's a very weak sensation. It's almost like um, seeing something in your peripheral vision. Like it's a barely there type of thing. You could attempt to use your ability almost like a, like I said, like a gold detector. Cause it, you have like a 60 foot range to like start walking up and down this. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, uh, you know, Penelope is excavating. Um, Penelope, give me another luck roll. And this Please. time I'm aiming for a 17 or higher since you're like. <laughs> uh, I do still have my detect magic going too. Cause uh, mm -hmm. divine sense didn't concentration. So. Okay, perfect. <laughs> it's a four. It's a four. Um, yeah, you're, you're still going in concentric circles outside from that middle point and you are making good progress in plowing the field. Millie is very pleased. Um, however, it is a pretty, it is a pretty large field. Um, let's see freely. Um, yes. Sorry. I was going to ask you if I can detect magic as well. Yes, of course. Yeah. So we now split up. So we'll say that everyone's in three quadrants. Um, or Kira and Arlindra are on the far side of this like plot of land. In the middle, we have uh, Penelope, who is like shaping the earth, moving outwards. And then at this end, we have, sorry, hit myself in the mouth. <laughs> we have Freely, uh, who's at the end closest to the house. Um, go ahead and give me a Arcana check, Freely. Um, same with you, Alindra. That is not my thing. Um, let's see. That is very um, my thing. Although I did Watch me do roll one. I was about to say, I didn't do terrible for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 18. 25. I'm like, 25. I, I listen when Alindra says words, like sometimes, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as, you're, as you're searching, Alindra, you're fairly sure that the area you've searched has nothing in it. Um, freely, there is, there is something closer to your side of the field about one third of the way up, like if you're facing this plot of land, about one third of the way up, there is something underneath uh, your feet. You feel the ground beneath like kind of hum very, very, uh, very gently. Uh, uh, Avery and Sophia, there's a, I'm, yes? I'm getting, I'm getting a hum. Is it like a, like a mechanical hum or just like a vibratory hum? A vibratory hum. Mm -hmm. Uh, you guys, there's, um, well, there, there's some here. And I just start prestidigitating dust out of the way. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sophia's is going to walk towards where Freely is. And can I roll for investigation? I know it's magic, but. Yeah. Um, investigating here, since it's just dirt, isn't going to do much. Mm -hmm. Um, Freely is also pretty sure it is there. It is just buried. Okay. Uh, you could call Penelope over to, to help you actually dig it up if oh, you that's wanted a... to. Um, Penelope, <laughs> I know you're very busy over there digging your hole, but um, could, would you mind coming over here? I think Freely might have found something. Rawr, I can't speak, but I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here and stop badgering Okira. Rawr. It's a joke. Badger, 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 badger. <laughs> Like a I, pit, I like also a, like a how you're a badger. I like. I was gonna say dinosaur. <laughs> I was going for like, yeah, like di like dino badgers. I don't know what bad dino badger. like. yeah. Badgers in this world sound exactly like that. Now we know that's exactly what they sound like. Thank you for clarifying. Giants. Especially giant badgers mm -hmm. like you. Yeah, it's amazing. So, as you were like plowing, um. <laughs> For for because I get that's that's what you're doing. I'm assuming you're like underground and there's like your little hump is like moving through. Yeah. Um, give me a survival check. It is a fifteen. Mm -hmm. You stop. Everything in your badger body tells you that if you <clears throat> dig further, not deeper, but if you dig further than at your current location. Um, you might hurt yourself. Like there, you know how like animals can sometimes even detect earthquakes. Like, like you just feel like this little sensation in your nose that shivers all the way down your back and into the tip of your tail. And you're like, Ooh, don't like that. Uh, Penelope pops up from the ground and just goes, no, 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 no. A little bit of dirt 
uh, flung off of <laughs> Penelope when she came up and Sophia swipes it off and, uh, uh, oh, did you find something? And she'll pop back from Wild Shape and say, I don't know. I don't like it. I found something, but I don't like it. So uh, how does everyone feel about undead? Averin. I mean, we let you hang around. Yeah. At that point, uh, Orkira will swoop on over with Alindra and like gently put Alindra down and say, you know how I feel. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just saying. Not you fan, know, personally. No, but uh, some of my best friends are undead, and sometimes they like to help out, and, you know, they always come back. So, <laughs> That's a bad I was wondering, joke. maybe no. I can summon one of them here, and they can oh, just it, dig for us. Stop it. What? No. What? 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 Just a friend. Or. <laughs> or, and I'll just pull out my claws and be like, no, 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 no. I'm no, getting no, dirty. No. I mean, Penelope already did some digging, so. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Are you like still it. a badger? But, <laughs> no. Uh, no. I, I, she popped I, out of you. I turn <laughs> and I, I put my hands on Penelope's shoulders and I'm like, okay, but wait, okay. But if there's something bad under the ground, that means it could hurt Millie as soon as we leave. So if there's something nasty down here, yeah. we need to get rid of it. What if we just mold, like, you know, the dirt thing you do without being a badger? Why don't you just do that thing? Only without uh, the touching of the dirt. So we don't lose uh, Orkira. And, you know, my undead friend doesn't get judged and persecuted by the cleric. No offense to you, Orkira. Akira, what should I do? I, I, well, I don't want any undead. So whatever involves no undead. I mean, I'm happy to dig. Or, hey, Melly, you have a shovel? <laughs> I... I mean, if the problem is you're worried about like us touching something bad, shovel? Because I agree with Freely. I think we can't leave something there that's bad. I mean, that's no, what I we're can, here to find, I right? I can get an servant in to help. Yeah, I can do the same. They're not undead. That's true. Not that we know of. Um, so. <laughs> but we do this dead. together. Well, mine, yeah. might, mine might be a little. Like a, uh, a little. I mean, it's, it's un undeaded. It's not. It's dead. undeadified. It was never alive. That's a thing. So uh, how about we cook up some unseen servants and just kick back and have a couple of uh, mimosas or something like that. See, what's, see what horrific ancient god is lying beneath the dirt. With mimosas. Yeah. I'm, sh I, I'm sure everything's going to be fine. What, whatever bad thing came out of the earth. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. Now I just keep prestidigitating because that's like my main way to like displace thing is that I'm like, uh, you're in a dirt, dirt, dirt. Dirt, 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 dirt. I'm gonna <laughs> cast. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna cast unseen servant. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start digging. Okay. So Biswalat's gonna come over with his eight legs and start slowly digging. All right. So I'm gonna as... get a shovel from Millie and just be on standby because <laughs> I can't do any of that. But I'm gonna be ready. Perfect. So as you like send in. The unseen servant and and uh, the, the gnome player, um, they do start digging. The going is slow. They're not as efficient as uh, Penelope was at this task, but they are making slow but short progress. Um, after some time, you just hear a loud but somewhat muffled, like metallic clink, and then a poof, and some device underneath the soil that you can't see um, sort of triggers. Uh-oh. Up top, you see, like, the kind of the, the dirt, like, rise up a few feet in the air, or Kira, that's what you would see. And you actually also see, since you're standing there with the shovel, um, almost like a small piece of metal come flying out. Like a trap. Uh, yeah, but thankfully, you are not close enough to it that it does not harm you um let's see just a single piece of metal or like a piece of sh like it's like one piece or? of shrapnel yeah okay yeah the, like the digging is like like four or five inches underneath the soil because you're like you're digging for for farming purposes for the most part right that was the that was the kind of idea that I got so it's not exactly like you know it, the dirt muffles some of it you're like a little bit further. I don't know if I'm describing this right, but you see yeah. the soil on top, like 
like give like a come off in like a cloud of dust, if that makes sense. Like it's been disturbed, like, poof. but the explosion isn't so big that like it hits you. Uh, but you can definitely hear that something underneath the, the soil has been like triggered. Um, and only one piece of metal like comes flying out, embeds itself, uh, you know, in one of the like little posts that Millie put up uh, to, you know, do her, to mark her fence. Um, and you do notice it's like a small piece of shrapnel. Um, Did anybody plant like claymore mines along the vineyard before? Was that <laughs> like a thing? Is this a war zone before it was a vineyard? So uh, f 14 points of damage. Um, oh. I don't know if that affects the unseen servant or it would, it, a lot, but it would destroy the unseen servant. It's only yeah. got one hit point. Okay. So the unseen servant. Well, I, I do have my protector cannon up. So mm -hmm. all creatures within a 10 foot radius. Uh, it says all creatures um, would still, get an extra you, eight temp hit points. That gets it to nine hit points and it took 14. So, so. Yeah. 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 I wasn't totally sure how many hit points it started and that's, with. That's all of the unseen servants or just one of them? Well, whichever ones were digging. Okay, so anything that was digging mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. exhausted. Is this a lot okay? Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. the, I think the artifice from Oculus actually scales with you. It's weird, but yeah. With your actually, eight hit points, he would only take six points of uh, piercing damage. Okay. Is he okay? Ooh, I don't know. I don't think oh. he is. Oh no. Wasn't me this time. I think yeah. he could re resummon though, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, he he did. <laughs> just, he so did. you just hear like a <laughs> sickening squish sound <gasps> and like a poof. <laughs> And then everything below you is, is silent. Rift gives what? a knowing look. <laughs> what? Wasn't me. Wasn't me. I mean, it. to be fair, I've killed him like three times, but that was not me this time. Uh-oh, it's too quiet now. Sophius, would you yes. like to take a look since you're the one who understands machines here? Well, yes, so this of is course. Something we, can, we can stop or... Well, I have, a, or... I have one idea. Um, and she leans over. Mm -hmm. Does she, does she see the trap? Is it visible from the surface? No, it's covered with dirt. It's totally dirt. covered. Yeah, because they're tunneling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we um, have an idea because of where the explosion happened and the noise and the shrapnel where it would yeah, be? Yeah, because like, you can, saw the dust cloud lift from that area. Okay. So you have like you don't have a visual. Like a direct line of sight, but you do, you all do know where it is. Is the hole big enough for a halfling to, to hop into? Uh, what's the size of a giant badger? They're big, bigger than a halfling. I was gonna say, I was like, <laughs> they're, they're it, medium, so yeah. it, it's it's giant badger sized, right. I will say also, this is one of those things, halflings can move through occupied spaces. So we're like canonically, yeah, in yeah, those yeah. Scrambly. so I would definitely say a halfling could fit in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm like, okay, hang on, Sophia. So let me just make sure it's safe. No, <laughs> like, really, the, no. Really, no. no. Stop. I super jump in the hole. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. No, we okay. talked it's about this. It's gonna be this. fine. Uh, no, that sounds like it is more than 10 feet away. No, I jump in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that doesn't help the problem. So, Freely moves a lot faster in this tunnel than than you do, Avery. And you kind of move at half speed since you, for you, this is like being in a, in like a air conditioning vent, um, you know, and for, for Freely, this is a little bit roomier. Freely, so, uh, impulse control. We spacious. talked about impulse control. But it's, I don't want Sophia's to come down here and get blown up. <laughs> I'm married to her. I want her not to be blown up 8 billion times more than you. But it, that's why we're here. Just 8 billion. You know, there are higher numbers than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I like head. really want you to like not blow up though. So that's why it's, it, it's, it's like, it's there. Yeah. Listen, listen, everyone needs to get in the hole together. Remember, we got to do this together. Everyone gets but, in the uh, hole. Uh, okay. Hold, hold, hold no, okay. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Sophia. Let the person who knows first. how to work machines get okay. in and see if she can disable just, the thing that's potentially I, going to destroy the like town. The, I just like the record to show that if Sophia gets blown up, I didn't want that to happen. Okay, yes, come on down, Sophia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think none of us want that to happen. 
Well, oh. you know, on the off chance that I do get blown up, um, Averin has some spare parts he might be able to use on me, and I've got my trusty little uh, butter number three that gives me some extra health. Got tell him spare halfling parts. First off, yeah. everyone's going to be fine. I mean, you know, I don't know why they didn't fit you at the time, really. I, you know, resources were low. Everyone, come into the hall. It's Is totally this fine. thing? Is what? this whole thing? thing? Is this the is... hole big enough for me to jump down it? Yeah, so it's kind of hard to explain. So <laughs> the way I envisioned it was that the badger was like, you could see the top of it, but they were like, you know, at, at, I should say Penelope. You could see the top of her back, but she was digging underneath and like kind of creating these these like perfect furrows for, for farming in because she's not trying to ruin Millie's farm. That was the That was the impression I got. So the the hole or the tunnel you're in isn't so much a tunnel so much as it's like a very tight space where the soil is less densely packed like it's been upturned and loosened but it hasn't been removed so when you're moving through this like you can't really see in front of you you have dirt in your eyes in your mouth the dirt is looser than the dirt around you that dirt is packed down and it is very like hard for for you Avrin, to move because you're wider but for freely being smaller freely is able to move through this but it's not like a tunnel in the purest sense like it's a it's a it's a negative space. It's not that. It's more like a space where that soil has been loosened and moved up a little bit. There's there's even soil above your head. But in my opinion, it's aerated enough that you can breathe difficultly, but you can. Sorry, I didn't hear anything after you told me Avon was wider, but <laughs> freely. <laughs> yes. But what I detected was mm. beneath me. So is yes. this like heading towards whatever I thought? Or yes. some, the explosion was before that? The explosion, so as you, let's let's go with this. As you like kind of round up on it, your footsteps in something gooey, which you can only imagine is the remains of a, oh, I of know a homunculus. Well. Oh, yeah. I know, I'm well, yeah. You know what, but it's, uh, actually I scoop a little dirt over him because I don't want Sophia to see him. See him hey, like hey, this? No, yeah, nope, nope, nope. We, need to, yeah. we need to save that. We need to save that. He's fine. Uh, Look, I uh, just, uh, I just need one one leg, and that that'll bring him back. It's okay. It's, it's happened many so times like before. In this is... trench, if you were to like take your hands and scoop up some of the soil, like and throw it behind you, you could see what they encountered. I just start press digitating it out of the way. Yeah. So you start to press to digitate it. Um, it falls backwards on Averin's head. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna Averin. cast um uh reduce on Averin. Okay, perfect. So, so he's Averin half size. is now a little bit. Smaller moves a little what? bit freer. Oh into, look, this this must be how it feels like to be freely. <laughs> oh, the dirt oh. as it gets pressed to digitate onto you now actually covers you a little bit more because you're smaller. <laughs> no, but you're so tall. <laughs> freely, what you doing? <laughs> and and freely as you like press to digitate it, you do see the remaining like sort of. Um, I guess like a like me metallic pieces of some mechanism that has been triggered, um, and if you if you dig a little deeper, you also see feel something underneath it. Uh, it's only the very tip of it, but you see, you feel something that's like hard and cold to the touch, but not metallic. Mm. I think you're up, Sophias. Uh, well, what do you see over there, Freely? Uh, it's machiny. I can't see anything. Uh, well, it's kind of machiny and kind of metallic, and this is usually the kind of thing I wouldn't I touch. It's not, metallic. Get oh, it's not metallic. It's <laughs> not metallic. Not um, metallic. I'm, uh, I'm afraid it might be a little explody. I can investigate more, but I, you're the expert. Uh, Sophia is going to dig her way over there as she's mm -hmm. eating dirt and trying to keep it out of her goggles. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, she's going to lose concentration on reducing Avern's size so that mm -hmm. she can Aww. reduce this trap size or this this contraption. Mm -hmm. um, the contraption or the, the like object? Uh, the ob the really object found. that okay. Freely found, yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. How would that work? Let me see what the spells... Uh, you can cause a creature or an object you see mm -hmm. within range to grow larger or smaller for the duration. Okay. So as you make it smaller. Um, so it's halved in all dimensions. 
you as it as it shrinks in size most of it is still buried but more of it is visible to you now because you've reduced the size of it and what you see is like this very large pointy uh substance that is um like i said feels hard to the touch like hard and cold and the part that is now visible to you to freely it was only like a tip it was only like very small no bigger than like you know this size but now that it's been reduced in size um you can see it's about the size of um a little bit larger than your hand what is currently un undug and the orientation is kind of like this pointing up um and the the sort of like uh triggered mechanical device is laying like inert beside it Can I make an investigation roll to mm -hmm. figure out what this thing is? Yeah, sure. Uh, 12. Um, you can't figure out what it is, but you do kind of figure out the orientation it's buried in. And you get the sense that like, it's, it's at a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So like, you're all kind of in a trench like this, freely found it at about like ankle height. And so it's like oriented like this and you get an idea that it's a lot bigger than you had initially anticipated is this what i was sensing Cause technically my detect magic is still up so um yeah is, is, is this the bad thing or is this a trap protecting the bad thing yeah so your detect magic is is coming up blank but your divine sense um is coming up like a little hot now Mm, from this or something that's like but this is between me and something else no from from this but it also right. feels really like like i said faint like a remnant or a residue i explained that to Averin and sophia and i even like yell it back down the tunnel i'm like um or you trench burrow thing <laughs> um, i don't know if i like pop my head up like bugs bunny i don't know but um, <laughs> like, um we found something that's not magic but not good yeah 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 that's the thing that's the thing maybe we should it, dig around it now that we know now that the trap is sprung and we know where the object is may this is a good time to start digging around it well, and expose well, it Penelope, to like daylight you just move the dirt because, yeah I can, well we keep mm, moving the dirt the but dirt we are so underground we so it's well, a little nerve-wracking mm -hmm. well if penelope moves the dirt you won't be underground anymore yeah. Um, can you mold earth like you used to? I mean, I can't yeah. do the stuff I used to do. So I, I, I can do it. It just it doesn't move a lot of dirt. So, you know, but I can do it. I pressed to digitate my one little like puff of. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's more than this. All right. Well, I'm going to start. I start putting my hands and I, I touch it. First off, I just touch. It. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like hard. Like I said, not metallic, but hard and cold. I didn't turn evil. So but I mean, but, but like everything down here is kind of Would it be a tooth cold you know what i mean like it feels really like moist you're that. you're inside soil <laughs> i knock on it are you a tooth <laughs> oh no um as you knock on it uh give me a give me a nature check this is not what i should have said <laughs> good thing is if it's a sandworm i'm gonna learn to write it it's a 17. Well, okay, dude, so it's 17, called a great one as you knock on it and as like uh, Alindra puts this idea in your head of it being a tooth, um, you feel like it's not a tooth, but it does feel keratinized. It does feel like nail-like to you. So, no one panic. <laughs> I mean, it's always a good way to start things. It's definitely not an artifact. <laughs> it's a nail. <laughs> it's like a toenail or a claw and it's under the ground and it's super big and we just made it, made it small <laughs> i don't think it's chrysala i think that'd be weird i don't know but there's something it's big it's going to be big wait so, somebody booby trapped the toenail i don't that doesn't make sense maybe it's a dracolich maybe they, they made some like hot wired dracolich i've done it before for funsies but you know because Sometimes you, you're going around, you want to have a good time. But when he says this has it's, a claw, 
It's a Draco Lich, and I sensed evil. I Eldritch Blast this thing. I'm no! like, I'm Draco Lich. No! no! Don't do I, those I do. things I, that you do. I, I absolutely <laughs> shoot it, 100%. Yeah. If it's an Kira, evil, done, dead dragon, we're going to throw hands right now, literally. He's Kira like, Kira immediately, like, prays out loud and says, oh, this is why I need death wars. <laughs> Please. So you shoot it, and nothing happens. You see, like, it impact the, the this, like, exposed nail. Um, you don't see any cracks develop or any visible kind of like, you know, impact of it. Um, and everything is kind of like still stills. And uh, Penelope, as you sort of like mold the earth and move it, you, you start to create this like depression, you know, in the in the in the field. And um, you all like kind of stand back from this, like, you know, because as I'm, in my mind, as Penelope is like molding the earth, she's pushing it up into the back like almost creating like this this like small crater a small like 10 foot radius um crater like in in the earth and as you all kind of like stand around it those of you who aren't still in the trench um and look down when she's finished you see this large multi-fingered like foot it almost looks like it has gigantic black shiny claws it is skeletal in nature um, and it ends where, like, the forearm would end. Uh-oh. Chopped crudely at that juncture or at that at that place. Uh, it's, a, it's a big severed hand foot? Skelet- like the skeleton of a foot, yeah. Oh. But like, like, is this, like, primordial godlike kind of stuff? Is it that big? It's huge. So, life experience... <laughs> This is bad. This is we have a piece of somebody who's like, eh, you know, barely more important than I am, maybe at best. But they're big, and this is a piece of them. And I'm wondering how much of this thing is in Millie's farm. Uh, Millie, you got any like legends of like one-legged death gods? <laughs> I think the rest of the death god is no? in the, the farm. <laughs> what is it? Why does it need to be a god? Why can't it just be some horrible? Creature? Yeah, I mean, why does it have to be horrible? Yeah, well, it really said he was getting a bad sense off of it, so I'm going down the horrible track because I don't know. Thanks, yeah. Arcara. Yeah, I mean, that's so... kind of under that kind of explains why the farm was abandoned for 20 years. I mean, there's a trap here. Um, there's a, a giant so, nail. I, also I have a feeling it's cut this put creature. A trap next to someone's leg because they're trying to protect why you called it a a hand foot because i said fingers and not toes (laughs) think about it oh (laughs) toes are the fingers of the feet (laughs) i mean depending on what animal you are yes absolutely i just just want you to understand i just went with it jasmine i just went with it the metatarsals of the feet (laughs) it's my job to support you (laughs) that's that's the kind of stuff i want to say in like meetings (laughs) okay so i totally agree that like putting a trap over a thing indicates hey this is a bad thing don't touch the bad thing but this is if that's the case once again why didn't they put a sign like why just put a thing a couple feet under the ground and put a trap over it and then not tell anybody if i had a really bad thing that i didn't want anybody to touch i'd put a big sign next to him be like hey this is a bad thing don't touch those bad people look for bad things that's kind of you know like yeah they they're coming back for it probably yeah you know, At I've, this point, Sophia's is concentrating very hard on keeping this thing reduced in size. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's God, huge even when it's reduced. So it's big while oh, it's geez. small. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how I feel playing freely. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, the the nail is about the size of, I think I said like like your hand. So you assume that at full size just the nail on the foot would be twice the size of your hand now that it's totally uncovered can we tell what kind of creature this thing came from yeah can i do an arcana check or something to be like yeah do i I know you um (laughs) yeah give me give me a nature check have we have we hung can i do a nature check too yeah of course yeah but no do you know what this thing is uh, 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 19 on the die and plus two is 21. i got 21 21 too oh blackjack (laughs) (laughs) so you immediately recognize it as something that is very almost like a a monitor lizard's foot is what it would look like to you penelope 
A what? A monitor. Uh, lizard? Monitor lizards. They're these big, like six foot. Big of lizards. Yeah, you ever very, see like kimono dragons? Yeah, 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 They're yeah, scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the way like the orientation of these like very long toes, and I guess maybe then it is a hand foot because. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is a yeah! hand foot. That's that's. Yeah, yeah. It made sense. Yeah. my description isn't super bad because they have no, you really correct. long. Yeah, they have really. So like when you see the orientation of like the, the knuckles and the and the size of the nails. Kind of, yeah. Kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. And you immediately, those of you who rolled high, immediately, but Penelope especially because this is her bag. You've seen lizards like this. You've seen them climb trees and you, you know like what this is, you know, as soon as you see it. It looks very familiar to you. You think it belongs to something like that. Yes. I glance over at Grant. Oh, sorry, really, really go ahead. Who's Grant? My dragon. <laughs> oh, you have a dragon oh. named Grant? Yes. <laughs> A, a baby I've been dragon. doing this a long time. I have a baby time. dragon. I swear, yeah, this is the first I've I've heard. Baby I didn't dragon. know your dragon's name was, was Grant either. Yeah, my dragon's name is Grant. My <laughs> baby blue dragon, Grant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me not interrupt that. Please continue. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say that um, I do have finite uses of divine sense, so I don't want to be overly meta with this. Yeah. But freely, we kind of like look at this like foot in the ground and then kind of turn and like pace out where it's like, well, if that's like a leg over there, then like the mm -hmm. rest of it should be around here ish. <laughs> and kind of like walk a few feet away. Yeah. And turn on divine sense again. Yeah. <laughs> As you're yeah. like walking, you don't really get anything else. Like you don't really if it, if there is something, it's far from where you're at. Hmm. Can, and as can you're I... like kind of walking back and forth, Millie's like, well, that's just my cabbage patch. If that was something bad for Lee, I would have found it. Uh, uh, well, Millie, why would someone not want you to dig up this foot? Because we're like, somebody didn't want you nosing around out here. And now here we are nosing. And, and... Can it's I? It's confusing because that is a trap. Well, I would have we... hurt myself. I may have died. Yeah. And they were trying to keep me from it. So they knew uh... that it was trapped. Well, actually, I, Sophia, uh, can you take a look? And I'd like to gather up the pieces of the trap and mm -hmm. like whatever I can find, go grab that piece that went flying off in the middle of nowhere and hand yeah. them on over and say, can you tell how old this is? I mean, mm -hmm. if this is something that got put here recently, then yeah, they're targeting Melly. But if this was like 20 years ago when these people disappeared and the, the whole place has been dead for a while, then this, this is not directed at Melly. This is just at anybody, right? Well, let me let me take a look at what you have there. I'm going to make a investigation roll. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, 23. So as you look at the the rusted pieces of metal and kind of like the way it's held together, um, you can tell just from the corrosion that this has been here for a long time. It was not placed here recently. Um, with that high of a roll, you would also sort of look notice from looking at it that this is an object that is typically thrown. There's a mechanism on what remains of like the bottom plate of almost like uh, like mount like mounting barbs. Like this is something that you all, you may throw at something and have it stick or latch on in some mm way. Um, so from looking at it, you kind of get you get a sense that this isn't so, a trap so much as this is a a thrown weapon. So I'm sort of piecing together what happened here. What I wanted to know was, does the, does the foot, the hand foot, does it look like Grant's foot, hand foot thing? <sighs> yeah. So as you, as you look at, at <laughs> Grant's hand foot, um, you do notice this is a little bit different. Um, okay. It's less dragon-like and, and more, uh, like I said, lizardy. <laughs> uh, Alindra. Um, you know, I, I realize, uh, uh, you know, we, we parted abruptly and, uh, both had some, some event, uh, eventful things have happened to us in the last couple of weeks. Haven't really had time to like reconnect and bond, but I feel like having a dragon hatchling is something that like we, this should have been higher on our, like, but does, what, does he like scratches? Can he talk? I don't, but does he breathe like I... little blue? Uh, he hasn't talked yet. He seems like a 
fiddling with like when when Sophia leaves out tools and things he seems to like he, he enjoys enjoys playing with those um he had quite a nightcap on the other night did everyone Same else again. know about a dragon ah. but, uh, yeah didn't you listen you and i went around dancing with aberrant monsters um, and spread well, storms and stuff really, like everyone got their own he didn't thing realize <laughs> you were here my sisters were really always stopped. missing <laughs> Yeah. Hi. Pleasure to meet you, Grant. Yeah. No, we'll have to like talk later when we're not doing like eldritch god autopsies. Okay. Hey. Hi. Uh, anyone else? Any like hidden? I'm I'm aware of Sir Biscalot. He's awful. Yeah. Yeah. We're just mainly um, offended that you're okay with the dragon, but somehow Sir Biscalot, you know, and, and all your rage as well. And then, by the way, mm -hmm. I still haven't forgotten that you, you, not only want to kill Sir Biscalot, but you want to attack my doll. One. Machete, and then you befriended Machete, and then you're like, "Wait, maybe this, well, maybe this doll is okay, one then. is a divine mystical creature that is the embodiment of everything that is powerful in life, and one is a horrific abomination that should have died many, many times over." I wouldn't Sorry, say that about you ever. First of all, I've never said that about you. Yeah. <laughs> I've thought it. <laughs> I mean, who are you to say that Sir Bissolat is not also divine and mystical? He has literally he me has and Orkira died too. Like over we have and like... over again, and he keeps coming back. I mean, that is divine and mystical. First off, we're working uh, on a small village of Koatoa. They are currently uh, praying to Sir Bissalot, and we're going to get him his deityhood eventually. It just takes a couple of weeks with them. His little saying, arm that I picked up kind of angrily squiggles. I'm I lean like, over to Penelope and I say, oh, they get distracted really fast. This, yeah. I'm still looking at this giant. Point. Yeah, so, I thought I was so, dead. So, so yeah. Millie, you're uh, either so in the business of being a paleontologist now, because you have a giant drag, a dragon lizard-like foot, which means you're rich. And I would immediately start a, a store selling, you know, giant fossils. So what I can infer here is, if, if this was shot or thrown, this this weapon trap, then something happened, and it was it it it, it removed the leg, perhaps in a fight. Whoever threw this trap threw it from a great distance, and they threw it a very long time ago, as you can see from the rust and the corrosion around this trap. Do so, you think this trap caused the damage to the foot? Does it look like it matches? From what we um, that's what I was thinking. Well, since it just blew up, you get the sort of sense that like it was shot and it didn't trigger when it didn't happened. Didn't blow it off. Yeah. Okay. But digging it, hitting it with a big metal or like, you know, that ignited it. But we can see the broken off part of the leg mm -hmm. and we saw the trap go off. Can we infer the mm -hmm. damage that this thing would have done? If, like, assumably this wasn't the only thing being thrown at this creature. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so when you saw like the kind of puff of smoke from and you saw like, you know, it immediately gibbleted like, you know, Sir Bisplot and you saw these pieces of metal fly off. Um, you get the idea this is a very powerful tool. If you were in there, like I said, it was 14 points of damage. Like if you had been in the hole, it would have sliced you all up pretty mm. well. Um, however, when you look at like the, the sort of like where this giant, this hand foot, I'm going to continue using that, that vocabulary, uh, is severed. Um, and the sort of like explosion slash flying pieces of metal that you saw, you wonder if like that that sort of like shrapnel would have been able to sever bone like that. So it's just crazy theory and I'm getting increasingly excited as I'm starting to think about this. I don't, and I am sad that this is not a coffin because I was really hoping for trapped coffin because I loved, co I love coffins. But <laughs> so this was a very big thing. I don't, it doesn't seem like it's getting up. <laughs> Someone had a weapon that kills big things. Chrysala is a big thing. Like maybe Sophia's can like deconstruct how this, this weapon was used. Maybe there are other weapons that we could maybe diffuse in the, in the dirt, or maybe some of this stuff was specifically made to kill gargantuan monsters or primordials or something like that. Wait a second. Because if Chrysala keeps on coming back, that means everyone else might have been used to, you know, having to fight it. Like we, we're not the first ones. And I'm pretty great with Eldritch Blast, but I, I, I gotta say, probably not gonna hit the mark in terms of like killing, you know, a giant death monster. Really? Well, I mean, I'm great with it, yeah, but. Or they used, they fought each other. 
and there's some creature out there that's does that that it only has one leg or three legs or however many legs it has it's it's down by one yeah that's, what, true. Uh, that's true and is able to is of this scale to contend with Kritzala. penelope the town, you, yeah you the town scale. knows about it because there was people that were trying to keep millie from from finding this or even i guess setting off the trap so how did they know why did they know so oh because they don't want us to find out about this. They don't want us to protect the town. Exactly. They make a terrible boat. They, destroy they don't the mine. want us to find the thing that saved. Freely, when you were describing Kretzala, did it have a foot like this? Well, we just heard stories. We're like, it's a lightning serpent. Like, I, I don't think so. I think it just swims. I don't know if it has feet at all. It's We've like seen no, drawings no one of it is... as well, right? Yeah, w but yeah, yeah. I'm I'm remembering know, seeing it? drawings uh, the, in the... in um uh Sally's office, but I can't remember if that's. I think that might have been Callie. So in in, mm. in the yeah, I think that was Callie. Uh, that well, was us. That was the first time I was here. Oh, that was right well, after I got here. I went through the the people. Mm -hmm. You you mm -hmm. saw it, but Orkira was downstairs distracting well, people. In so. the renderings that Freely has seen as Kretzala, does she have feet like this? Um, no. Uh, Kretzala being like more of an aquatic creature, this strikes to you as a, a land creature. I mean, wait, Avery. Side I know note, looking at monitor lizards on my second, you know, screen, or I was looking at the hands in particular to make sure I described them correctly. They are very like kind of splayed out. So when I say like, you know, the, the fingers are long, they're very long and the claws kind of come up at like a very wicked curve. Um, and they're very dark black. Uh, also, side note, looking up uh, monitor lizard claws, I'm now terrified of monitor lizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Seeing the animals, they eat and just, um, yeah. They have poison too, don't they? Yep. No, they're horribly oh, poisonous well, and bacteria. Yeah, so they, yeah, With they their eat, teeth and it's like a, they eat rotten food. Yeah. 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 yeah, they eat rotten food. That, it's like, like necr necrotic there. damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah you're pretty, pretty much done. <laughs> Well, I'll link it to y'all, but there's one of one climbing a a gate, like a, a gate to a parking garage or a house, and it looks like it looks like Godzilla. <laughs> that oh, whole collection that of creatures that are basically dragons from dinosaurs Technic are horrifying and amazing. Technically, yes, absolutely. human beings have a poisonous bite too, especially when you get upset. Bile is introduced into your mouth, and our bite's actually poisonous. Yeah. Wow. Which is, thanks uh, for that. Yep. You're welcome. So, uh, uh, so freely. <laughs> Unscientific like, facts like, with the silver and steel crew. <laughs> the more you Tuesday. Know. I'm like, meanwhile, back out here in this wasteland, uh, <laughs> does it seem like this foot is the dominant feature of this land, or is it like worth like trying to investigate the rest of these structures, keep digging and poking, or? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like looking around. Give me a perception check. I am not very perceptive. Uh, let's see. That is, is before you um, announce that. Considering uh, I went for a nice little flight with Alindra and was oh, looking around, yeah. can I can I help him with this? Yes, or? yes. You can also kind of uh, give me a give me a perception check. Okay. And I you also take off my goggles, which I don't own, but I'm going to take them off anyways, and I'm going to climb on top of a tree as the camera pans up behind me. <laughs> in a dramatic fashion as I look at the farm. <laughs> Big old 17 from Freely. Okay, yeah. He is, he is a doer, not a looker. Yeah. Well, even with the 17 looking around, um, there is nothing that really strikes your interest as like, as uh, something that might be worth investigating. I got a 21. Does that help? Yeah. So with the 21 like from your aerial view you know that like this there's like you know what used to be the remains of like some dilapidated farm structures on your left on the right you're reasonably sure there can't be anything because that's earth and and stuff that millie has already kind of you know uh unearthed you know um there's not really a uh, meaningful piece of land uh that's like farmable um that you see around you Okay. Can I trace the trajectory of where the um, weapon came from? Um, yeah, so give me an investigation check. Uh, 
I love how this just turned into silver and steel CSI. <laughs> I watched a documentary uh, about me, ah, me. 17. <laughs> okay. So the 17, you actually notice there are three sort of like small marks on the nail that you originally like discovered when you started digging up this thing. And you can line them up with the marks on the exploded device. And from what you can gather, this, this like sort of mine, for lack of a better word, was shot, attached itself onto the nail and then failed to trigger. And it was later triggered, you know, by your, by your unseen servant. So you can't really trace tell. to the point of origin at all where it came from. Um, that you wouldn't be able to figure out because there's not like, yeah, there's not like nothing anything to triangulate with. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably a good time to bring up the fact that I was in the blood war. Um, <laughs> does this look like anything like larger vehicles, larger weapons that are of an ornate nature used to fight in a large scale battle kind of thing? Like, does this mm -hmm. seem like an order or an organization made this? Like, this has been in the dirt a long time. Yeah, so people have been rolling around with this weapon for much longer than I thought anyone was rolling around mm -hmm. with this type of technology. Uh, um, I don't. I'm not asking if it's similar in the sense that it is infernal. Yeah. I'm just curious if does this seem like a, a larger industry, mining lots of people, like pyramid-like efforts had to come together to create this yeah. kind of weapon. So as you look at it. Um, you do you don't get the idea that it's it's mass produced you get the idea that this is something that was made with great labor one at a time i don't know if that answers your question it infers that it, people were very invested in killing whatever this thing was you don't get this idea that like oh these parts were were produced you know somewhere because you notice like as you're looking at it that the rivets aren't all even you know, so, like little things like that. There's like human error. There's there's little differences, like sort of like in the, I guess I should say irregularities, like even in the disc, like, you know, because um, it's like, you know, it used to be kind of a disc, but now it's like blown open. Like looking at it, you get the idea that it was hand forged. You can see indentations where like a hammer was taken to like beat the metal into place and stuff like that. Can I shave off a piece of the bone? Uh, you can attempt to, yeah. Excellent, I'm going to attempt to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know what you're doing and I am not pleased about it. I'm not doing anything. I'm just to take a look at this bone. It's a nice bone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's also taking a piece of it freely. Did you, do you have an idea? Cause I, I was thinking something, but. We've seen Salome's handiwork up close and we've been in her lab. Mm -hmm. Does this look goblin made? It, it kind of does. Some of it does resemble her kind of like her engineering, I should say. And she is very old, so. You know, yes. it's interesting that you bring up Salome because I was thinking the opposite. I was thinking asking her about this creature because you'd yes. figure anything this big, people would know about it and we might be able to narrow down what it is, how long ago it lived, if there are any more of these around. You know, we might, if we figure out some more information about that, we might know why they want to keep it hidden. So she might know about both these things. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if, if this is true, if this is the thing that we were kept from, somebody was willing to go to great, great lengths to imperil all of Hedge, all of Port Argent, all of everything that has happened, theoretically, was to stop us from finding this. Also, Salome uh, likes to collect maps, and if we are lucky, then maybe she has some, something um, topographical. Also, at this point, it's not like we can put it back in the ground and forget about it, right? I mean, I mean we could. We could Sophia like is focusing very hard on reducing the size of this nail still. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, how much time do we have before this explodes? I what double check. I, I don't get think it's going to explode. It's just the, the just threat that again. someone might come back for it. I kind of get down in there with it and I look and see is there anything under this like it was the foot mm -hmm. did the foot like step on something when it got blown off like is there anything yeah. buried underneath this thing yeah um so there. you start looking around underneath it um give me an investigation check really I'm like if this squishes me remember me as I was Okay. Oh hey there's my natural 20 and I don't hey. think we hey. 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 congrats hey. chat Yay. Yay. 
I don't think we explained it. So yes, there you go. Explain why yes, where Hazard did. did she? Yeah, Not today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did we? Absolutely. It was in the process of doing everything wrong. I missed the thing that was done right, apparently. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But there we are. So as you're like looking underneath the foot, lifting up each finger carefully, um, it's heavy. And uh, it takes you a second, but then your, your eyes land on it. Um, you notice like something small and red poking out of the soil. It doesn't take much to dig it up. And you see like a, a hand carved totem made out of what looks to be to you wood wrapped in now a faded, dirty sort of uh, red ribbon. Um, I don't touch it. I mage hand it out. And I'm okay. like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know you all, you sneaky boy. Yeah, so you, you, you <laughs> mage hand it out. Um, it looks to your eyes to be some kind of metal that was at once one time shiny but is now like heavily tarnished it almost looks uh like a sort of um blackened in color because it's 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 so old and and dirty um give me a give me a religion check do i feel like this is what mm -hmm. i was feeling not the foot yeah so this actually gives you a a good feeling from it Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Maybe I might have over exaggerated things here. Mm -hmm. Um, religion is I don't think I have any modifiers, but yep, that's mm -hmm. 15. 15. With 15, and with the sort of like red string around the, the totem, you don't get the idea that this is like magic in nature so much. But you get the idea that this was placed here almost like a like an offering or a prayer, especially the red string, especially catches your eye. Like it gives you, it gives you the sense that like maybe something, well, let's see, give me an intelligence saving throw. I will say I float, I float the, mm -hmm. I float this thing up where everyone can see it. And I'm yeah. like, they're booby trapping and leaving offerings. Yeah. Um, My boy is not very smart. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> is it save you say? Yeah. Uh, 14. Okay. Um, Alindra, since he floats it up and shows it to you, I feel like this would be your bag. Um, give me, give me a, a religion check. All right. 22. Okay. With a 22, it clicks in your head immediately as, as freely as like, you know, they they got bombs or booby traps in this thing. And like, I, just, I just imagine you're like, it's a divine grenade pin. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you like float it up to her, you know, with the mage hand. And Alindra, as you look at it, it, it kind of all clicks into place in your head. Um, especially like with this little totem that was like placed. It almost looks to you like a guardian. Um, the visage is is kind of vaguely humanoid. It has a helmet. It's in so much armor. You can't really tell looking at it like what kind of a figure this is but it's it looks to you like it's a guardian like this was buried here and this was put there to keep it there um i think unless we have intentions of allowing things to move we should put it back am i getting uh oh i don't have detect evil uh, i don't have it on do i have it no i don't need a touch I keep shaving bone off into like a, like a little capsule. So as you as don't you let him summon one of these, please. Your knife down and and you try to like like slash at the bone. Um, your knife starts to chip before the bone does. Oh man! It is hard. It is calcified. It's been in the ground for a long time. Maybe some small sliver might like almost like microscopic might come off, but you're having a hard time like actually getting into this like old calcified bone. Oh, well, maybe, maybe it needs teeth. Sometimes things need teeth and I bite it. <laughs> yeah, as you gnaw on it, you get a vaguely earth flavor. But I'm just standing I... there with a mage hand what and I'm like, taste you like? gave me a hard time for jumping in the hole and you're chewing on the cursed monster bone. <laughs> I'm the only one that, that knows what this tastes like. That has to be good for something. <laughs> no one is supposed to. <laughs> Are we so, making it into a stew? Don't give her any ideas. No, this Sophia, is no stew. bones, dude. No, no, no we're cooking it. There's I mean, probably we're, we're cooking not it. any marrow left. Yeah. So the flavor Can will I be gone. Can I take out my 
thieves tools and attempt to shave off a piece of this nail as well? Um, you get from the impression of, of Averin kind of slashing at it that it's less a matter of skill and more a matter of, matter of like the materials you have, this bone is harder than. It's petrified. Like, why aren't yeah. you guys like this? Um, is everybody done looking at the totem? Because I'll, I'll put it back if you. Do I recognize anything else on the totem? I recognize that it's a guardian, but do I recognize what faith it's from, what it's representative of, you know, just any any detail about it? It looks um, vaguely uh, like some like some uh, something like a a value token that maybe a soldier would have. Hmm. I pointed it. Look at Millie. Millie, does that look familiar at all? Do you know what that might she, be? She like takes a look at it and she's like, "Uh, I haven't seen anything like this for a long time." But uh. I've seen a some. Long time. <laughs> well, I've seen some miners sometimes have little good luck charms like this. Sometimes they try to sell them to you for very large sums of money. You think this is worth something? Uh, no, we don't. We think we should put it back, and maybe we'll put Machete next to it so Machete has a friend. No, it is not worth anything. But I have to plow this field. Yeah, you can still plow the field. There's you just a move giant... that foot. Well, uh, okay, so what if we fence off the foot and that becomes like a lovely pond? Why are we burying the foot she again? She turns well, to Alindra and she says, talk sense to your father. Good luck with this. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> uh, or Kira, it seems like um, this, this, and I do like sort of mage handed towards her face. Uh, he's good. This was vaguely bad. This was put here to make sure this stays here. So until we know why, it probably should stay. Okay, <laughs> okay are we going to add a sign? <laughs> what well, if the bad In guys find out where it is? I think the bad guys so tempting. <laughs> the bad guys already know, right? If the bad guys are trying to keep us, anyone, Millie, from discovering this or using this or figuring this out or whatever it is that's going on, they already know. They hid it. The problem is they were trying to hide things. So we've uncovered things. If it's so, bad, shouldn't we put up a sign so people don't? Well, it's so, Millie's, question. Millie's property. So. Do I recognize any? Oh, go ahead. Is Machete back with me yet? Yeah. I'm, kind of, I'm like machete. Hey, hey, are you are you in there? Are you with me? Um, you notice that she still kind of like blinks and moves, but she does like nod her head kind of gently. Um, I, I know this is crazy because you know we we just removed the curse and everything, but do you still have access to any of the magic you used to help me last time? Um, let me see. Kira is going to give a, a sidelong glance to Freely because she remembers all the blood. Oh, this is going to get really fun. Really Look, quick. I can put an alarm around it. That's not a problem. No, but... it's not the alarm. She helped me access the information out of the doll. Maybe she's got a way to help me access information out of this. I don't know if I trust blood magic on top of the protective totem. She's not cursed anymore, so that might not be her jam. I'm just, let's see. She. I mean, it, it's the it's the the totem that we want to get information about. Now? The foot. Well, but anyway, foot. I well, I mean, the foot's see, not magical see. though. It's the totem that's. Well, the foot was vaguely foot... radiating negativity, yes. but only a little. The okay. totem is not magical. She kind of very weakly nods at you. And I I just literally like hold her almost like I'm holding a baby in front of me. I'm like, okay, so I don't want to stress you out. I know you've had a hard day. Do you think you can do it? Because you don't have to. If you want to say no, it's okay. I won't be mad at you. Mm -hmm. What do you want her to do? Well, OOC, I don't mm -hmm. know to to what extent she was really doing something to help me versus facilitating the narrative previously. Uh -huh. But to Freely, she helped me understand what something was. Yes. And mm -hmm. I want her to do that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it could be that I'm honestly, I'm more interested in the foot than the totem, but I mean, I don't know if it needs to be something crafted, which the totem is, or yeah. if not the foot, but to, oh, yes, go magic ahead. Magic, I can identify it and find out 
what's happening with the object and what's affecting it and so on and so forth. It's none of it's magic though. She kind of like pats you on the hand as though she wants to be put down. I do put her down. When you put her down, she like grabs her, her little shank that you, you made her that pops out, you know? <laughs> um, and she starts drawing in the dirt. And she draws like a like a like a stick figure. And then she draws like a slash through the arm and then puts an arrow in one direction, a slash through the neck, puts the arrow in another direction, a slash through the leg, puts the arrow in another direction, and then is like. Oh, they separated it and split the parts up so it couldn't be reattached and resurrected. Sue, now was that so hard? I, I, apparently, yeah. No, it was, clearly, because we just got here. All what right. do we do? Well, number one, let's set an alarm on this thing. Maybe we bury it <laughs> as well. Um, plant some gr plants and thorns on it, and we we t we talk to Salome immediately. In the middle yeah. of the field. No, Millie, 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 Millie. Blackberry um, bushes, they're super friendly. <laughs> so, or okay. Sue farms blackberry bushes. Yeah. Yes, yes, Penelope. Or, or we we find all the pieces and we put it together and see if that big monster will fight the other big monster. I'm oh, that's a good idea. On this because look, the bad guys don't want us to do it. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> we should do it. Yeah. I cast lesser demons and I dress them up as school children and they handed out flags. What? I you know can... I can communicate what? with this. That kid. That's oh. <laughs> okay, Creeley, I, I know I know sometimes you have trouble with things, but do you remember that time we hung out for like, I don't know, like really, really long time and it was like this gooey ship and you had like tendrils? Yeah, you weren't a halfling then, buddy. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean like yeah, we were like mind players for like two hundred years. I know yeah, yeah. I remember. No, yeah. no, okay. So wait, hold on, hold on, Freely. Yeah. You had tentacles and you made fun of Sir Biswalat. You've killed Sir Biswalat. No, I mean, but like, I was like temporarily a mind flayer. That's when I met all of them. I was a mind flayer. That's why Penelope and I hit it off so much. Yeah, but I hate to tell you this. Old me. But mother, you, you wow. had tentacles and attacked an entire city. Well, I have no problem having tentacles. The only person here that has problem with tentacles is Freely. I just wanted to call him out on the no, hypocrisy I, because I, he was a mind flayer, apparently, at one time. I, I don't have the problem with the tentacles. I have the problem with it being an undead eldritch abomination. But hang on, we're, we're missing the moment here, Sophia. So, Sophia, so we're missing Penelope, the moment. Let's, let's, let's walk and talk. So tell me how we reattach Please don't walk limbs. away. We're trying to talk no, together. No, well, we're this. fine. We're just talking about... Uh... About yeah. assembling the creature. We're talking about moss. It's, we're talking assembling about moss the right creature. Now. Please don't walk away. We're trying to I, talk about assembling the creature. I'm <laughs> not. I'm just going to do some gardening. Uh, Sophia finds some blackberry bushes, and she is going to do some magical tinkering so that it says "danger ahead." Uh, it's a static visual effect. It's like a, no, no, a no, mark, a marquee, wrong. a marquee of lights that not just says "danger, danger ahead." Not mm -hmm. danger ahead. Danger afoot. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been That's Silver so and much Gale. better than We're what I thought. All right. So <laughs> we're going to this episode. <laughs> yeah. See, so like this to be the name of this episode. Sophia goes <laughs> back and kind of erases a head and writes a foot. No, you erase neon. <sighs> yeah, it's magical. We we lost we lost people. We lost friends. <laughs> Another Whatever war in this battlefield. Another <laughs> war just claimed a lot of innocent lives in this battlefield. <laughs> This well, episode has claimed lots of things. <laughs> war, war never changes. We take this never minefield changes. very seriously. It doesn't ever change. It's just hell. It's just war hell. never changes. Tell me more, Ron Perlman. <laughs> just out of abject curiosity. <laughs> How dare you, Penelope? <laughs> when, when Machete drew in the ground and explained to all of us what was going on, um, does it look like the arrows might be? accurate to directions did she actually like point the foot arrow to the foot um you notice as you're looking at it that it's more like in a half circle like it was just aesthetically pleasing to do it that way does that I, make I, sense okay. I, I, all right I, I, so it was just to, to explain the idea mm -hmm. not to actually go the heads over yeah. there <laughs> and the okay. I, I do look at her and i just kind of motion for millie too because of course i'm going to ask two of your npcs something simultaneously mm -hmm. i'm like uh, i'm Machete, do you do you think you can help us find the rest of it? Or, or Millie, are there other places that you're forbidden to dig? Like the dwarves know, like, you yeah, dig here, it's bad luck. 
Um, Machete kind of the shrug. worst dwarvish accent I've ever heard. <laughs> it's that's how halflings speak dwarvish. It's a regional <laughs> dialect, okay? <laughs> Machete kind of shrugs. Melly kind of thinks, and she's like, "I can put some fear letters out." <laughs> Don't, don't. We probably don't want people to know we're looking for cursed places we're not mm. supposed to dig. I mean, don't they already know? But they isn't don't the know. Whole point of they don't know we know. Well, yeah, but now we've all been here, and they at least know that Millie knows something or is on onto something, right? I mean, that was the whole point of coming out here is she was in danger because there was a thing. I can't believe I'm saying so, this. Maybe we stop we, telling secrets. Maybe we do tell secrets. I don't know how to do the truth thing. Maybe we tell everyone, we tell the whole town, there is a giant monster. We I, either I, should I, assemble it or not. Either way, it's a group effort. We've got to get I, everyone I, together on the same. Oh, oh God, I hate all of this that is happening. I believe I'm saying this. We need to all come together. I agree with Avon. Well, if there's the a danger, all of everyone has a right to know. Exactly. So yes, everyone has a right to know that there's a threat. Or Kira, you're trying to say something. Sorry, what are you? I'm listening to you. If the whole point of whoever is, if if everything has been bothering Millie to stop her and it's all been about keeping this a secret, then yeah, I agree with everybody else. We need to tell everybody. We need to make it so that they can't, whoever is trying to stop us can't be in the shadows anymore. They have is to it, just come out and be evil. Is it possible that Kratzala is a way for them to find this? I don't think we know anything yet. And I, in fact, the only thing we know is Kratzala's early. Like she should be back, but she shouldn't be back so soon. We well, still, it's also very possible that some of this is not related. So getting more information is gonna help figure all that well, out. Well, let me ask you this. Before we put together one any? big monster. Can, can we agree on this? Bury this back right now. All of us go talk to Salome right now, and at least that will help the, add some information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Lindra, can you cast alarm? We'll, we'll. Yes, uh, we'll, I will we'll go ahead and cast alarm here. Mm -hmm. um, Penelope, are you capable of reburying this? Mm, yes. Yes. Uh, Sophia, can you make a trap? Do you know how to make some kind of explode explode? Enough traps. Why don't okay, we just, no I think well, then. Well, you know, I can always try, but I think what we should do right now is we should go back to town, inform the council so that they can tell everybody that there's danger afoot. And we will take this giant nail uh, to Salome and have her investigate it. No, and maybe I think we, she has there, some maps. We have to leave we're the taking, nail. We're taking Close, the grenade, the grenade bits to Salome, yeah. Yeah. But can we the, the foot we here. have to leave it we have to leave it? Yeah. It's too big but to can carry. We bring Salome. We can bring Salome. I mean here. if she we can bring Salome to if if the foot will not go to Salome, then Salome. I can deeply go to the suspect foot. Okay. Salome already knows what this foot is. Also well, then we'll find out more. We'll 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 I, I have a strange question. Okay. Yes. Just one what if instead of well what if instead of going to Salome we went to talk to some of the children. Why the children? Wait. Because they know stories about monsters. Oh, I thought they were the future. Um, mm. That too. Oh, also the past, depending on yeah. how you think about time. Freely, well, look, Freely looks up at the sun and he's like, we don't have a lot of time before we gotta head out tonight. If she, yeah. if she built that bomb, I'd rather go to the source personally, but if you wanna talk to these children, we could do that. We need to let no, the we, council know. We can know. go to the source. I just, it's a way to find out the, the, the lore and see if we can get any information on the creature. Uh, what better way than go straight to the source, right? They have heard more lore than anybody. I, we got to let Salome know. This is an All imminent right. threat. We then let's go to Salome. The city council know. We got to let yeah. everyone know, and then we can ask Barry. the children. All right. Barry, Barry, Barry. Salome, Barry, Salome, Barry, Salome. Barry, Barry. <laughs> Barry, Barry. That's, that's editing. That's a semantic Sophia's cut. Sophia's reluctantly. Barry, Barry. Montage. Salome, Salome. Sophia's reluctantly buries the nail and she releases concentration and then the nail pokes out of the sand again and you hear 
take a deep sigh and she starts burying it again. <laughs> I just give her a hug and I'm like, we'll do something terrible with it later. I promise. <sighs> Don't worry, we're okay. gonna clone it. It's and be great. Before we go away, the part that's still sticking out of the ground, or Kira comes up with a little wooden sign that she is uh, very hastily put together and hangs it or, or puts it on the side. And the sign says, Danger, evil thing. Don't touch. Next to the, listen, our sign's way better. It says, Danger of Foot's neon. Don't try to compete. This isn't like two different separate businesses right next to each other. No, your sign is good for aerial stuff. And this sign is good for the people who just come walking up. It's not a competition. This is about warning people, right? Do you, uh, the, uh, who's going to be walking into my field? Well, I, uh, the I, same people who are going to try to stop us from doing whatever we're doing. Uh, Millie, yeah, I know you've got like 12 jobs. Uh, Alindra put an alarm on this place. Um, if, you know, you hear some ringing, please don't try and be a hero. Just like call us shoot a shot in the air we'll know we'll come running unless we're out you know in the ocean <laughs> of course or but, i uh, can just set it to be a mental alarm for me if it triggers oh well that's useful well, yeah i mean the whole town might maybe would want to know but yeah then yeah, we'll come we... do some heroing she nods right, let's go. she's like i i thought i was gonna get treasure today you see her like kind of mm. kicking Aww. at the dirt with her foot I, now now everybody's okay. plowed Wait, didn't even uh, plow the whole uh, rudden thing. Avon. I uh, I I backhand some gold to to Sophia's because I'm apparently never good at this and I'm cursed. <laughs> so Sophia looks at the coin. Is and there I, a face uh, of Avon on this coin? What hey Millie, what's that in the dirt? <laughs> you do not give her cursed Avon coins. Or Kara's going to reach into her bag and pull out her little bag of marshmallows and hold it out to Millie and say, I'm sorry we couldn't find you anything that was good news. You want some marshmallows for your hot cocoa? Oh, that's mighty sweet. It, just cocoa think about cheer me up. She takes think, it from you appreciatively. Think about the your cocoa always is amazing. I mean, Freely keeps raving about it. And I, I trust him when he tries anything. Think about the tourism opportunities here. They'd like, you're going to be like, there's like this foot and then it's going to be attached to something bigger. And then everybody mm. will know it started right here with you, Millie. Mm. It's going to work out great. I promise. Hey, I promise it's going to work out great. I was going to go more radishes or maybe carrots or it's no, there's still no, don't look sad, Millie. No, no, this is, like, this, this is a win for I know what you're thinking. I thought it was going to be treasure. It's just like a cursed foot of an ancient god. But trust me, the real treasure is going to be the resurrected merchandising. Pa merchandising, yes. Now we got to go talk to Salome. Are you coming? Make you a gonna... sketch of it and put it on a t shirt. <laughs> you come, Did you buy them? Oh, yeah. No, I'm like, I, I, I'm minor illusion. I'm like, no, I'm pretty good on what it looks like. But um, but I think that's uh good for you. Are you coming with us to Salome? You stay here. Maybe a calendar. Here. <gasps> calendar. Yeah, yeah. I buy that calendar. Just press, press it to just hit the calendar we have. Each toe is a different month, and <laughs> the last that's, month they're all together. <laughs> that's either not a lot of months or way too many toes. <laughs> But are you coming with us to see Salome, Millie? Why um, everyone's having today. this? Why everyone's right. having this conversation? I'm slipping an Avon coin into the dirt above the, the fossil. Mm -hmm. If it starts growing a coin tree, I'm destroying this entire town. By the way, I, yeah, I do have to take magic up, so I would probably notice if you do that. Is this a regular coin? Is mm -hmm. it? Are you trying to be sneaky about it? Yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, because I I would love to know if you beat my passive perception. I got a twenty three. Sophia right, hands Avon her invisibility gum. <laughs> oh, I'm, that's way more conspicuous. Uh, <laughs> I was say, I was like, Wait, did, did, did you roll on that? Because I, I I might have a petty portent that would have been in line before that roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely have a three you right have a in the barrel. Portent. You gotta kind of know what someone's doing. <laughs> It's I not love worth it. I've petty portents. Those are I'm not a huge fan. Sure. I'm gonna say I'm a huge fan. <laughs> there is but no I'm save. Gonna, as as someone who just wanted to know about that stealth roll, I'm gonna say no. Either okay. nothing's gonna happen, or this is gonna go really wrong. And I think either way is very Fair interesting. Enough. Then I will sit back and not interfere. Yeah. Yeah. What do your coins do? Oh, not really anything. <laughs> I mean, oh. they have they have a weird. Uh, 
things happen sometimes and sometimes they, they don't and yeah like machete <laughs> right so yes it's erratic but they are tied to me in some um, some way okay sometimes like for instance i died once and it, it grew a, a tree that had coins on it so ah, okay. yeah so weird things can happen with my coins mm -hmm. so yeah you bury the coin uh, or carry you don't notice um Millie informs you freely that she's not going to go into town to see Salome. She's got work to do around the farm, dishes to wash. Ooh, you know, um, we kind of got to save everybody uh, this afternoon, but uh, otherwise I would hang around and I would help you clean. But once we do that and when we come back, if it's still not clean, I will help you then. Mm -hmm. You did help her with her dishes that she already had from when you came over. I did, but then so we it's dirty really more just, dishes. Yeah, it's just, the, it's just the dishes you dirtied for breakfast, so. The oh, dead Cerbis a lot that. helps a lot. Oh, tomorrow, uh, Millie, um, if we see you again, Cerbis a lot can help you. He can't, he's indisposed right now, but he can help you tomorrow. He's decomposed. Uh, That'd he's, be nice. That too. Well, he's helping fertilize her land right now, and then I turn and walk away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so mean. So you, I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> you leave but, Millie's house, uh, you know, with... Um, machete kind of bobbling somewhat lifelessly on your shoulder now freely um yeah i'm assuming you all follow yeah we're going to see mm -hmm. salome right mm -hmm. um mind for salome. I, I i am every once in a while i'm just kind of like you did so good no it, this is great like i've done you feel like you rest i know it was a long it's a long morning thank you so much you know just like you're like a super pep talk while yeah. we're walking um you make it back to the to the Salome shop and um you realize it's empty. And uh the her her brother Salazar uh informs you that um she's actually uh at the docks or by the beach rather, um working on your working on your conveyance. Okay, I we, thought, you, we, I thought it was we, empty, empty. But we <laughs> but we see Salazar, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I hit Salazar with message, just where it's right in his ear. Mm -hmm. And I just say, uh, quick question for you, Salazar. Um, do you know anything about a giant creature that got blown to bits a long time ago around here? You see him kind of like think about it, and he's like, not really, no. I would like to insight check him. Yeah, go for it. Uh, that is not a terribly great roll. Um, that's a big old 13. Yeah, he looks more, uh, how do I say this? Like, he, at this point, he just expects you all to ask him ridiculous things. So he looks more like he's dealing with the crazy person that lingers at the bus stop. That's kind of like, you know, the person that's like, you know, are you a disease to the people of your time? Like, that's the kind of treatment he's giving you. Like, oh, well, I don't know about that, buddy. Valid. Okay. <laughs> well deserved. Yeah. <laughs> then out loud, I'm like, okay, off to the docks. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. And then head to the docks. When you go to the docks, um, you, re you notice that, like, your boat has been worked on. Um and uh we'll we'll get to that maybe later with some of the flail snail accoutrements you had been talking about um but you also uh notice that salome is set up not really at the docks but at where the docks end i should say like on the beachhead um she's got your strange land water device kind of perched up um right at the water's edge and she's kind of like kicking it in places, tinkering at it, hitting it with her hammer here and there, making like minor adjustments. Do we see those beautiful purple painted people that there with her? <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, as we're approaching, I'm like, mm, Alindra, maybe you should do the questioning. The rest of us tend to say too much. Yes, I mean you, I'm, Avery. I'm happy to do so. Um. I walk over and take a look at the device she's she's been working on. Can I see what improvements she's made to it from the last time? Yeah, so it looks like she's reinforced the hull in places. Um, it's almost like a double layered cage like structure that she's built. Um, the outer cage kind of like 
pushes down on the inner sort of solid ball, which is what you'll be inside. Mm-hmm. Um, that entire exoskeleton she's created seems new to you. Hmm. Um, she's also kind of worked at the maneuverability of this thing. And so you get the idea that the legs deploy when it's on sand, but when underwater, uh, this thing kind of just like float, like the, the inner ball floats inside this like exterior armature that is like reinforced against it. And it kind of is like a, like a hamster. So it's like a, like a, almost like a gyroscopic thing inside of a bathysphere Mm, cage. Okay. Yeah. So you won't be like super cool. (laughs) flipping up and down (laughs) when you're in it yeah yeah um the other let me see what other improvements has she made you just notice that like there's like little quality of life changes she's made um it looks sturdier than the last time you looked at it it looks more waterproof from all your approximation things are reinforced hinges are reinforced in places generally less death trappy (laughs) yeah yeah. Except that uh, she now strapped a whole bunch of explosives to it, too. <laughs> oh, yes. That is something that you, you all wanted to. I mean, oh. we well, wanted well, to yeah. 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 do another. There was a suggestion that got out of hand. So yeah, so curious. it has the ability to hold a bunch of uh, explosive materials. But oh, that is yeah. very good to know because I have a lots of explosive material. Also, this exoskeleton is second to none. Widdle would love this. And Sophia starts taking notes and investigating mm-hmm. this uh, land and sea mobile. Mm-hmm. He's very impressed. Yeah. And Salam is like, thank you. It was nothing. It's, it's lovely. It's, it's incredible work. Uh, might it's be quite my remarkable jointing quite- and... and- the stability is, is extraordinary. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay. is, it, is it okay if I go inside and test it out? Of course, just... uh, trust to stretch your legs out. It's not oh. ready to go in the water yet, but it could do just about everything else. We It's phenomenal. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's it called? I haven't really come up with a name yet. I've been too busy. Mm. Oh, mm. um. I mean, Dave, Storm, we call Storm Dave? Herald? Dave? Storm Herald 2. Storm Herald 3. I mean. 3. Uh, <laughs> Dave. Storm, Storm Herald. Storm Herald 3, the gerbil ball. That gets Sphere, swallowed Sphere and explodes. Herald. Yeah. <laughs> Sphere Herald. Just, <laughs> whether or not it can be named Dave will be directly predicated on whether or not it works. You know? <laughs> the, the gerbile. <laughs> the gerbile. I like Does that, that mean the Penelope has to turn into a gerbil when we're inside? I mean, uh, I won't say no. I mean, well, that's an alternative. Penelope's just there power. running the whole time and the ball is just spinning around us. And we're just like, <laughs> she's a giant gerbil. <laughs> Aww. Um, so uh, this is this is extraordinary. So so tell us, um, obviously we are, uh, we're here to deal with Krasala. Can you tell us about um, the, kind of the lore of monsters in the region? Kritala clearly is a, a very specific type of creature. Are there other creatures similar around here? I've heard things here and there. Not anything super specific. Why? What are you looking for? Um, just to clarify, uh, out of character, we, we're, we're telling her the things. We're not telling her the things. We suspected she created the weapon that was found next to the foot, which means she may know what it Show is. Show her the the. So yeah. do we want to do we want to just? I mean, in this pregnant pause, as as she asks you that, you'd see Orkira open her mouth as if to like just spill everything and then stop because she remembers freely saying. We say too, we much. Speak too much. Yeah. What if we said so Frit Sala? That's the name of the ship. <laughs> Frit Sala. Because we're critically hitting it with the explosion. I like that. So that that would be making it sink. Well, that's something simple like the bullet. Oh. But it's not shaped like a bullet. It's like a musket ball. But uh, yeah, no, dealer's choice, Alindra. Or one of those, like, uh, isn't that that monster with the the really, like, sharp front? Fugu. And the, oh, no. Is that a bullet? I don't know. I never pronounced it correctly. Bullet. 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 Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, what said about us, remember what I said about all of us saying too much? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> the bubblelet. Please proceed, Alindra. Uh, 
so no, I, I'm just curious about other creatures of this this realm and information about them and uh, mythology stories, monsters. Well, were there, uh, were there, I where I came from, together. there. Were, I'm sorry, say that again. What I have is just uh, little bits and pieces that I've pieced together. <gasps> That's so specific, the wording. Yeah, what yeah, if you had a really large, large piece? <laughs> mm. Well, uh, I guess like the my biggest find is what I showed you about the, the, the serpent in the sea. I've been trying to get the city to take it seriously for quite some time now. We what believe you, you clearly, mm -hmm. because we're acting on it, so... It's hard to find information about stuff. Uh, well, I guess uh, that's the, the big thing I kind of pieced together from my studies. I've traveled uh, at least some part of this continent, more than most of the people in this tiny town, and uh, the biggest thing I've realized is people don't like talking about the monsters because they feel like... Uh, the creatures, I should say. Because they feel like if you believe in them, that gives them power. Or well, are the creatures gods? Because that's gods. I mean, that's how the gods work. Maybe. At least they were worshipped as gods at some point, I think. So if we just don't believe in these creatures, then they do not exist? I think it's superstition. You said There's they... a giant turtle in the ocean, and uh, if I sometimes believe, well, if we all stopped believing she existed, would she disappear? Probably not, you know? No, yeah, no, uh, Avery knows that turtle pretty well. But no, but you said they... I think it's just superstition. ...and were. Uh, were there, there's, there's Kretzala, there's the turtle. Were there any other... Well, you, you met something like that, like the, the brood, the brood mother, or the barren mother, sorry. It, no, but more things like that are so, uh, rare. They're uh, what are the mostly monsters? extinct, but I assume there's probably things like the the barren mother out there. What are the stories they tell the children? They may mm. not believe in. There may not be monsters out there, but certainly there are stories that they tell the children. Don't go into the woods because such and such will eat you. Uh, yet yeah, many centuries ago, the, the triumph in the battle against such and such a, a dragon or... Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, gosh, it's been such a long time. What I'm a new here. Penelope like, and I, I love the, stories. I know the, the barren mother is one of those, you know, don't go by the river at night. The barren mother will get you. She wants your children, you know, she takes children. You know, that uh, would have been good if somebody told us that before we went out and found out the Baron Mother was real. So are there any more of those, like, don't go that way-ish because a giant monster will destroy well, I mean, you Nobody stories? knew that it was in that lake. I mean, you th they say don't go by the water at night. Any water. It could be this water. It could be a river. That's where a lot of these tales start up, by your own admission, right? Where they say, oh, don't, you know, eat rice at night. The rice monster will get you. She kind of, like, chuckles. Yeah. Okay. You know, so, like, uh, don't cross Avrin. Yeah, no, I've never heard that one. Purely yeah. mythical. Very purely famous. mythical. <laughs> uh, uh, Alindra, I apologize. I've miscalculated. And I pull out the ruin of this bomb. Mm. I'm like, Salome, did you make this? <laughs> um, when you pull it out, she actually looks really interested. And she's like, oh, I didn't make this, but uh, it looks very familiar to me. This is, uh, well, this would have interested your friend, uh, Kelly. This is Tinkertown make. Like, wait, like Zverf Nablin? Oh, I know some of their people train up in this uh, Tinkertown. Remember I told you? Uh, oh, the one as far as you ever possibly went. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, uh, this is definitely you, where this came from. Uh, you guys, she said she's traveled all the world, but the furthest she went was a place called Tinkertown, and it was like many days like north, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen something like this in a while. Nobody in this town made this, no. Definitely not me. This is old. Old me, probably. Well, yeah, no, I didn't want to be offensive because, you know, yeah, how old? Well, uh, I don't know. Some of the design's outdated, you know. It looks like the scorch marks are new, though. I'm guessing it probably failed to trigger the way it was supposed to, right? Uh. Eh, yes, it uh, it's killed my little friend, uh, Serbus Holat. It's very tragic, but he'll be, he'll be back tomorrow. Mm. 
Yeah. Are we just telling her at this point? Are we just telling her? Decades are we just old, probably. Her? What? What are we telling me? I you have added. We found a giant this? monster in a. In, we found a giant monster claw in the middle of a farm. You see her perk up, like you've, like you know, her little hunch and her little hobble with her stick, like goes away. She's like a monster. Uh, I love well, monsters. Yeah, it's a really big claw. It's buried out in a field that uh, Millie now has. So, so, and then. <laughs> Sorry, your here got antsy. <laughs> Millie's got a Did giant claw. With the claw. That was all I needed. <laughs> and or here suddenly looks very abashed and looks over to Linda and says, "It's okay. It's okay." Oh, sorry. Yeah, I thought Please we don't. Decided, yeah, touch it. Very dangerous. Are there any stories about a creature that was broken into parts to keep it safe, to keep the people safe? That I've never heard about, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means I gotta know where to look. I minor illusion the foot. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, like with a tiny That's knee big. next to it for scale. I really yeah. want. Do you think? Do you think Millie would give it to me? What if I bought it from her? I bet uh, Salazar would loan me the money. You oh, know, wouldn't I, that look great in my lab? Maybe, Please, but it, it, there's there's something evil remaining there and there's something protecting it and i don't know if it's keeping someone from finding it wait did it move keeping... is the foot gonna move is it a moving right. foot i don't want Pro a moving foot it's probably Not gonna move eventually this moment, yeah but right perhaps if it was reunited with a different part or yeah the yeah, animated we... we don't want it to move i don't think <sighs> okay all right you, she you like, don't find out who separated it and what the creature was before we find out whether or not we want it moving right maybe yeah, more information will and be I good. just look at Griff and Griff's eyebrows are just judging. I'm you just like, I'm sorry, keep I was trying. This information under wraps because the more you're talking about, the more I'm realizing this is more than just a fossil, right? Yeah. Because that creature you fought. Yeah. You know, the, the crocodile looking creature was to say somebody doesn't do that to this. Yeah. Some screws, some rivets. Man, y'all got to stop flapping your flapping your jowls at everybody that comes by. That's This is big information. You notice her looking around now? Yeah, we and do. As she scans around, um, you do see uh, playing on the beach a familiar small goblin child. Uh, and you just see <laughs> an eldritch blast go off and a seagull, like, fall to the ground dead while she carries, like, a tiny little baby turtle in her hand <laughs> to the ocean and puts it in. And then eldritch blasts another seagull and it falls to the ground dead as she goes and like covers another one with her arms and like, you know, trying to find something to like, you know, provide it cover with. And you just see Salome go, oh God. Oh I mean, God, what is We, we did something very similar in the Underdark, <laughs> but they were like man-sized mosquito bug things. It, it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, maybe keep that one to yourself till we get back from our thing tonight to find out what we have to do about that monster before maybe this monster. And it's, it's just rid up. It's just, it's been a, a busy few weeks in this town. It's just really been a busy few weeks. Mm -hmm. And that we're be... not telling the council. No. <laughs> and that'll be where we draw to a close for the night. <laughs> Poor seagulls. Yeah. I'm like, I'm kind of on the fence on it. <laughs> But also, <laughs> seagulls are rats with wings. They're jerks. They deserve to die. <laughs> I used to be. I used to. Yeah. I don't know. These are normal sized turtles, so they're very, they're very small Tur versus like the giant turtles y'all saved. Oh no, we lost Todd. I think. Oh jeez. It was perfect timing though. <laughs> really. Yeah. At least that's good. Screen it cap. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We're it's at very the pensive. end. Pensive. Mm -hmm. oh. have a hard go of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's like that angel shit from Doctor Who. <laughs> I got oh, you. Oh man, you are not of this world, and that was proof. That's terrifying. <laughs> that was terrifying. You don't see me. You don't. Let's I, get I can some move. Introductions done, and call it for the night. I know we're a little over time. Lauren, take it away. Oh, geez. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the community manager for DD Beyond. You can find me wherever DD Beyond is sold. You can also find me on Twitter as Oba Lauren. Bye, <laughs> Megan. I'm Megan Kenrick. You can find me wherever Todd is, probably. Um, Twitter and Twitch at Megan Kenrick. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, Todd. I have foreseen this moment. Hi, hello. I'm Todd Kenrick. <laughs> I'm your creative director. 
<laughs> manager over at D&D Beyond. I like, I, I like words about things. I like stealing your phrases. I like stealing your moment. That's it. Steal it right back, Jen. <laughs> hey, I'm Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me on Twitch as DreamWisp with Jen. Um, I'm the creator of the accessibility in tabletop uh gaming resource document which is in my pin tweet um and i do acting producing writing all the things um thanks for being here hanging out on this wonky day yeah b dave uh b dave walters uh i am versatile and that i say words as well as write words as well as record words <laughs> uh dungeons and dragons and dark and wish is back thursdays at five on twitch.tv forward slash d and d uh anything else you can find on twitter at b dave walters fantastic hope sure. I am Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. That's all. Yeah. Is it the T H E E or T H E? T H E. For our podcast listeners at home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, Jasmine, uh, that bronze girl, Bueller. You can just call me bronze if you want. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at that bronze girl, on Twitch at that bronze girl, where I host a, a morning talk show. Um, yeah. I'm playing through Assassin's Creed Valhalla right now. It's really dope because I'm a really big fan of the Vikings show. And uh, and yeah, I'm hype. I'm ready to. I need I'm to try to that. Just like paint my face. With, with, yeah. Yeah. It's it. all about Lagartos braids. Yeah, there is a be- way to raid. So, like I would raid IRL. <laughs> <laughs> Do you jump off of things into giant haystacks or is it something very Valhalla? No, I literally I, I roll up holding on to like the mast of a ship and I go boop. And then we all like jump off of, you know, like, like, like this, what, what, like, like this. And then yeah, everybody's yeah. like, whoa, and they jump off the boat and we just start setting stuff on fire and murdering people and like pillaging. And it is everything. Sounds like a Dungeons and Dragons game. Well, I mean, yeah. at, at, the, at the end of the pandemic, we'll all put a mast on my Toyota Corolla and we'll go <laughs> driving around <laughs> don't, Redmond. Don't forget your, <laughs> don't forget your battle kazoo. Just <laughs> always do the battle kazoo. Just. Just, just mugging. On it. <laughs> Perfect. That's the imagery we're going to leave. I'm growing the beard long with. for it. Yeah. I need that's to order the, a bunch of kazoos. That's the yes. imagery we're going to leave y'all with for the night. All of us. <laughs> Toyota Corolla. <laughs> Battle kazoos. Sail off the back. And yes. axes. Blowing kazoos. <laughs> Rolling through the suburbs. <laughs> I'm actually kind of here for this. Yeah, I'm 100%. Yes, let's do this. I'm already I'm already picking out my kazoo. I'm already picking out my song. It's great. You know, this is 410. <laughs> so All right. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Good night everybody. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is available now on D&D Beyond. Purchase before January 5th to unlock the Cauldron die set as well as character sheet backdrops themes and frames.